in the in the thank you section. But yeah, I guess he's, I can't remember who he said he was, but it's in our review. I, his name is in the review. Matt Brand. Matt Brand. And he's, yeah, he did, went on to drum for Avril Lavigne, which is cool. And he's still, yeah, like I said, he's still in the, the industry uh, doing things, so. You can put the link in the this link one. Back in. Yeah, sorry, that was a bit weird. We haven't had to deal with that. And <laughs> not yet. So it's 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 weird. It kind of threw us for a loop there for a second when we had some. Well, and I figured because of the settings that I have on our main one, it would apply to the vertical, but it doesn't seem to have worked. Yeah. So that's okay. Go figure. I don't know. It'll be alright. Maybe it's a, just a kink in their little system. But yeah. Um, but since all of that, I actually have no idea what you were talking about. I just knew that you said uh, Cone 2. Cone 2 and then yeah, Matt two from, Yeah, Alan the, the Clown had said uh, Cone 2 from Half Hour of Power because you remember seeing that. Yeah. <sighs> just getting the link back in. You can go ahead and continue talking. See, I know you say that, but then it's like my brain just, you know, turns so much. Well, because you were the one that you were the one of us that first discovered code. Because Stephanie is yeah, more of a detail-oriented human being, so than I. <laughs> I always look at the little details and read all of the little, you know, the little leaflets. I keep calling it leaflet. What is the little booklet, the CD booklet, right? And I, I've always loved reading that stuff and just seeing, you know, funny little inside jokes throughout, or you know, whatever. Sure. It's just like my little. I've always just been into like researching even like stuff like that like see how much stuff you can pull out from you know the band and whatever there we go I feel bad I do feel bad though because that one person was actually asking a legitimate yeah music question but I'll have to look up Ren from the UK at some point but now you're not talking. I'm just doing that. <laughs> yeah, so much for the no technical di difficulties, right? <laughs> then that goes and happens. You jinxed it. Okay, all right, cool. I just wanted to save that. Um, so you then... have a 20 plus year question from, does this look infected? Ooh, okay. Hit, hit us with it. We'll see if we've come across the answer. Or if we can find the answer. Dun, dun, dun. Cause we still have, um, we still have our final sum up video. Yeah. <laughs> we have to sum some. up sum 41 and we yeah. have to do the- I made that joke. Oh. Well, not here in the, I can't remember what it was when I was writing the summary or to sum it up, I put, I like put sum 41 or or something dumb like that, you know, cheesy jokes. Ah, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, sorry about sorry that. Sorry about the confusion. We have now figured out how to moderate yes. on the vertical, so we'll we'll try to. Uh, we've never keep that. had to worry about spam comments before, but I appreciate that you came, came back. back. <laughs> um, but yeah, Alan, what is your question? Because we would love to hear it, and we would love to try to if 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 it's something that you don't have an answer to, that maybe we could find out. Okay, so what is the little scream at the end of Thanks for Nothing coming into the next track? I think that's one of the things that we had noticed, too, because there's a few things throughout some of the albums, like on, um, yeah, like a woman scream. There, and then there is at the end of, um, I think it's in The Jester on Underclass Hero, there's a laugh. But then there's something I've noticed, it's almost on every single album, there's always some weird little... <clears throat> Very, very, very quiet noise like that on one of their songs. And I started noticing it after, it was after Under a Class Hero. And like, or in this last one, right? The little chicken balk noise in the middle of the track. And it's like, what is that? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to, I wanna listen to that again just to. I'm gonna write that down that so one. we look up. We'll look that up this week and see if we can find it. And then next week, we should hopefully have an answer for yeah. it. See what we can figure out. Well, one of the things I wanted to do too is get kind of like, but this is hard because like we don't, a lot of the times there's not a lot of people that come on live or, you know, even if we get you know, like the views on the main, <laughs> yeah, on the main, um, like the main videos, there's not a whole lot of like comments and interactions. But one of the things that I wanted to do was try to get everybody's, like get votes right for like top album top song and then kind of do like a little mini like awards show to mm -hmm. sum everything up but i don't know if we would have enough input um yeah, through you know, community posts or live like i had hoped we would have picked up more people on the live streams before then because i mean this is this is week nine nine of this yeah because yeah, next nine. week's 10 so yeah the but, uh i wrote that down so that way we can look into that this yeah. week and see what we can figure out 
Um, and for mixed onions on the vertical, um, I wrote the song down. I'm gonna check that out this week. So I wanna give that give that a listen to and, and see see what that's about. So because I like I like long songs. One of my personal favorite long songs is um, from Herbie Hancock, uh, Chameleon. If you haven't heard it, it's 15 minutes of funk music, and it's so all over the place, and it's so much <laughs> it's so much fun, and it's really like if you don't like that kind of music, it's you're not gonna want to listen through it. But it's it's really neat because it's it's 15 minutes. She hasn't she hates that song, um, but to sit and listen to the whole thing is quite an experience. So it's a lot of fun. So if you ever get a chance, I I love long songs. So that's a really good song. Chameleon by Herbie Hancock. So I'm gonna check out that. Reliant K has a really long. Scene. I'm gonna check out the. Too. I'm gonna check out the High Ren this week. I can't remember how long it was, but Deathbed was really long. The, the, the story one. Yeah, very religious too. No. Yeah. That, is that one? That's that's the one that's super religious. <laughs> so. Oh, I mean, it's a good song. Like it's, it's done really well. Like it's fantastic. The end. Yeah, the is end is mostly yeah. The the rest of the storyline. It's not just telling a like yeah. a sad life story. Yeah, but the build-up is for the end, right? Good song, though. Like, it's done really well. It's... <laughs> I really can't see anything. I got it here. Uh, I oh, think you... you'll be falling into the red something. rabbit hole. I, <laughs> I'm okay with rabbit holes. Like, good rabbit holes I'm fine with. It's And I've really been wanting something new lately, too, when it comes to music. And, and I go through the... Every once in a while, I'll go through these phases. Like, I have the music that I love, that I really enjoy. But sometimes I really, like there's certain periods of time where I just get bored with the same old stuff. And it's not that I don't like what I usually listen to, but I, sometimes I just want something very different and it's always hard for me to really find that piece. So if there's, if it's a rabbit hole that I'm, that I will want to go down, I'm a hundred percent for it. So hit me with recommendations. I may like it. I may not. That's okay. Um, I'm up for checking out pretty much anything. But it's, I, I don't like country music by any stretch of the means. I hate it. But there's times where people be like, you should check out those artists. And I'll be like, oh, what are they? What are they? They're like, oh, they're country music. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'll listen to a song or two and see what I think. Because you never know. Every once in a while, there's a pop song where it's like, okay, all right, that's fair enough. I can listen to that. But generally speaking. But anyway, that's beside the point. The point of it is I'm open to listening to anything to see if it's something that I'll enjoy. So if it's a rabbit hole, I will happily go down it if, if that's the case. So Because I'm really looking for something new right now because I'm I just... I don't know, I need something different. Well, and because, like, we've been doing, we like, in doing the discography, we've been listening to the same albums over and over and over and over and over again. Which, is like, they don't really get boring. No. But it is, you know. Well, and it's not that I I'm... miss listening to some of the stuff that I just, like, want to listen to, I guess. But that's, the, that's the thing. Like, when I sit down, I'll say, all right, what am I going to listen to? And I'll go through my playlist, and I'll just be like, no, that doesn't, it doesn't really, I don't feel like listening to that. I don't feel like listening to that. Do you want to leave this open so we can read the comments? Yeah. Um, the, uh, only long song I don't like is Freebird. <laughs> That's funny, because last week, last week, we, last had week we had somebody, uh, type into the chat, play Freebird. <laughs> um, I don't mind that song. Like, I have nothing against it. It's not one that I would pick out. Like, I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to Freebird. Um, but if it was on, I wouldn't turn it off, if, if that makes sense. I, I don't mind that song. Uh, um, that, that's funny. Um. Now I feel like you should play it just. Well, I don't want YouTube to flag me. <laughs> they don't on lives. Do they not? No. Are you sure? I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway, we don't need to listen to Freebird. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh... Skinner was a good band. It's it's unfortunate. The um. You're out of the picture. It's unfortunate the tragedy of the plane crash back in the day. So it's they were they were they were a good band. Like I know they've kind of come back with different members and, and stuff like that, but it's it's just not the same a lot of times. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Long songs are long songs are good. Especially if they're done really well. That's the thing. Like, um, what's the song? It's a no effect song and it's it's really long. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's, it's a really good song and it, it covers a whole slew of punk styles and it's, it keeps your interest, which is How excellent. How come this doesn't stay open for you? I don't know. Uh, thank God nobody's decided to do a <laughs> damn remix of it. Yeah. Now that you've said it, somebody's going to do it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that seems to be what happens a lot of times things 
like get said and i don't know if it's the collective mindset this is kind of cool sorry on the idea of hive mind if you ever notice someday when you're out and about look at all the people that are around you there will be a predominant color that everybody's wearing when you go to your work there'll be a predominant color that everybody's wearing the amount of times that i go to work and somebody's wearing a color that i almost wore where that morning where it's like, I oh, I picked up a shirt, I'm going to wear it, and it's like, ah, no, I don't want to wear this. And then I go to work and everybody's wearing that color. Like, really? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's happened so many times. We've lived a lot of places and worked, I've worked, I've had a lot of different jobs. And that's one thing that's relatively consistent that I've found is there is this interesting, weird hive mind where everybody, there seems to be one color that everybody picks in a day. So, <laughs> not music related, but on the note of, now that you said it, somebody's gonna do it. <laughs> Did you pause it? Is that where no. that closed? No. Because it should stay open, so we could read things. No, it doesn't. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why. Hmm. It, maybe because my auto close is after a minute, but like just- That doesn't the, make sense if you're watching a video though. I don't know. Oh. That's weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, so yeah, so this week we'll have to check out the um that screen and see if we can figure it out. Yeah. There's so many small things um that uh show up in music that get really I think get missed if you don't pay attention or listen with like uh headphones. Headphones. headphones I notice a lot more when I'm where when I'm listening to music with headphones on. Well the opening the uh Eminem's original debut album, the the Slim Shady L P I think that's what it's called anyway his his first album the first intro where he's starting the record the guy who's talking he says a couple things and if you listen real close you can hear a whispering happening in the background before he says more and then a whispering and it's unless you listen real close or have earbuds in you, it gets missed really it gets missed really easy the uk is weird for canadian music we don't get a lot of it here really oh. that's interesting i would have thought you would because of like the Commonwealth. you know yeah the connection between our two countries. <laughs> yeah, I don't that's know. Funny. I wonder if it... Yeah, that's weird. Because usually it should be music going out. Because I know Canadian law requires, you know, the aspect of Canadian stations and things like that playing a certain amount of Canadian mm -hmm. content. But I, I would find it strange about the export. I don't know, maybe the UK could potentially have similar type laws so that we're like unaware of. I feel like Canadian bands are normally bigger outside of Canada than they are inside of Canada. Yeah, a lot of times Nickelback is a prime <laughs> example of that. I want to see, I don't know when it comes out, I, I'm very curious to see <laughs> Celine Dion. The, um, I'm very curious to see the, um, the documentary that they're releasing about the hating of Nickelback. I can't remember what it's called, but it's coming out. I don't remember if it's going to be theaters or if it's Netflix or something like that, but they're actually releasing a documentary that has to do with the whole concept of Nickelback being loved to be hated. Which I'm really curious it's to funny. see. I still want to. I want to see that, and I still haven't see. I still want to see the uh, the Bob Marley movie, One Love, or whatever it's called. So the mentioning, sorry, mentioning Celine Dion on the vertical thing. To me, the only time I ever heard, like obviously she's a very talented singer. Like you can't deny that. Like whatever, her voice just not my particular thing. But the one time that I thought she actually sounded really nice is when you listen to the. Um, what is his name? George Martin, In My Life. the All of the Beatles songs that he re-recorded with people like uh, Robin Williams. Celebrities. And, yeah, and Jim Carrey is another one on there. And Celine Dion. And one of the points that he made to her is that he didn't want her to do all of the vocal gymnastics. He just wanted her to sing with her pure voice. And it was actually, like, it, it was great. And it was really nice hearing her sing that way. And just, yeah, I don't know why, like, she... I don't know why some singers feel the need to do all of like the crazy tricks when they have a gift mm -hmm. anyways, if they just like sing normally, but yeah. That's a good album. If you haven't had a chance and if you like the Beatles, you should yeah. check it out. It's I mean, called... even if you don't like the Beatles. The only place that I think you can find it though is through YouTube. Um, it's called In My Life and George, yeah, George Martin redid the Beatles song, a lot of the Beatles songs with celebrities. And it's really good. I love the um, Jim Carrey's I Am The Walrus yeah. is really good. And then Robin Williams does Come Together. Yeah. Goldie Hawn does A Hard Day's Night. Um, yeah, there's an instrumental of Here Comes the Sun, and it's it's amazing. I love that song. 
the um, Alan the Clown wants to see the Nickelback documentary too. I'm one of the reasons I'm curious about. It, I used to be on the Nickelback hating train. I just I hated them. Um, <laughs> then I went back and I listened through their music. I listened through their discography a couple years ago, and I realized that one I like the music itself. The music itself, they do a really good job as musicians. It's very it's very catchy. It can be very raw at times, and it's a lot of fun to listen to. The thing I don't like about Nickelback is Chad Kroger's voice. The early yeah. days, early days, it's not so bad because his voice kind of fit the scene. You had bands like Creed and stuff like that, where it was kind of that gravelly, almost not twangy, but kind of country-ish kind of vocals. And so in the early days, his voice really fit the music and it wasn't bad. And it's not that it's bad. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like how Chad Kroger sounds yeah. personally. Um, but the music itself, I really enjoy. If their albums were released as um, instrumentals, that I would listen to. But I'm just not a fan of his voice. Yeah. So Mixed Onion said, last band from Canada that I remember making it here in the UK was Arcade Fire. They were a good band. The uh, I, have, I've, I haven't listened to a ton of their stuff. But the Why stuff do I know? the stuff that I have listened to is really good. They had really they had a really interesting um, up story. The uh, I don't remember the details, but Alan Cross uh, on his ongoing history of new music did a little mini bit of Arcade Fire history, and it was really good. Um, Heidi Shannon said a lot of it here. Where are you from, Heidi? Um, we'd be curious to know. Welcome, by the way. Mm -hmm. Glad. Thank you for commenting and, and joining in. Good to see you here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You were about to say something. I don't know. Oh, okay. oh but yeah, I was going to say it because Alan said he recently watched a... And in case you're wondering, we have the mainstream going to on our channel, so you can always join us there. Um, recently watched a documentary about old school Bay Area punk and recognized almost every band that was named. That's awesome. What was the... Do you remember what the name of the documentary was? I'd be really curious to watch that. Um, I, liked how, uh, I liked how you remind me. Yeah, that was a good song. Until um, it was overplayed. <laughs> Until it was overplayed. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. song. I mean, I, I think every person on Earth probably has heard that song at least once. Well, the, um, what's the song? Is that, that's never made it as a wise man. That's not, that's yes, that one, right? Yeah. That song, this is a really weird triangle here. So that song was done by Nickelback. Sum 41 covered it live. <laughs> and Avril Lavigne covered it on one of her albums. So that one song, and there's that weird triangle yeah. where it was Avril Lavigne and Derek married, and then split, and then her and Chad Kroger. So the fact that they've all sang that <laughs> song is really weird, um, but I find it really funny. Um, but yeah. Oh, we're in. Um, so mixed onions has a neighbor that they live in the UK, but they have a neighbor that is Canadian. Oh, where sweet. in Canada are they from? Yeah, we kind of. <laughs> They're from this address. That's right here. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Uh, turn it around. The story of a bait. Oh, cool! I'm gonna. She was quite a popular artist over here. Oh, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, turn it around. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm writing down what Alan said. Yeah, I feel like Can Canada does have a lot of good um, music artists that come from here, but I've like a lot of and we've touched on this before. Like that, I think one of the things too with that though is because our our schools have a lot of focus on music and the arts and stuff. Like even like in high school, like I know in the area that I grew up, there were a lot of high schools that were like specialty for performing arts and stuff. So I think a lot of that has to come from there. And I think the structure of a lot of the music here too, because we have, you know, just like when people get into classical music, there's a very, like it, it's all standardized, right? So it's a very formal way that, people do things and it's kind of easier to navigate somebody's skill level that way I guess when you're going through that which I mean obviously it's different than you know popular music or rock music but oh and thank you Alan I wrote that down I want to check that documentary out it's about my whole oh the homeland sorry artist of the drawing kind okay <laughs> different oh. kind of artist but still an that's artist that's cool <laughs> I like art. It's that's actually something that you might not know about me. When I was around grade eight, I really enjoyed going to art museums. Oh, really? Yep. I like. I really enjoy looking at art. For a time, he tried to to draw portraits too, and it was funny. He'd get um, he 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 started drawing them of like all of our friends and. Jim did Perry. you give them to them? No, I still have the originals somewhere. Yeah. 
it was I great. have I have digital copies somewhere too. I mean, I'm not one to talk. I can't draw. I do other things, but like, I mean, I can draw if I really like focus on it, but I don't feel like my dra it, so I don't my drawing it. of Tom Cruise. <laughs> Jermaine. Looked like Jermaine from uh, Flight, Flight of the, the Concords. Yeah. It, it was amazing. So My Stallone picture actually looked like Stallone, I must say, but they were... My, like a caricature. Oops, I kicked the camera. My, my, <laughs> they were more than a caricature. It was just, it was brutal all the way around. Yeah. Um, I don't really like this song. Most of the, uh, <laughs> most of the, most of the music that I've liked over the years has either been Canadian or from California, which I realized as an adult because, and I think I said this on a previous live, mm -hmm. um, where a lot of bands that I found out later on that I listened to or really enjoyed were either from certain parts of Canada hey, or they were from, um, or they were from, uh, California areas that I found out <laughs> later on, but yeah. <laughs> Hey, Carly, welcome. Sorry. Good to see you. I just interrupted him because I'm excited to see you. <laughs> it's always good to have our regulars back. Is that well? This is exciting. I, I think this is, and I know I said this last week. The it's really exciting to have a community started. Yeah. Um, to have people joining in. Um, to have Alan the Cl Alan the clown back, and to have Carlife back. Mm -hmm. It's always good to see you guys. Um, so every this once is cool. in a while, so Hamburger cool. Man shows up. <laughs> yeah, Hamburger Man. I wonder. Yeah, he every once in a while he he comes up. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, sorry. I'll yeah, it's easier than me. That's why I don't understand why it's not. Um, and then now we have mixed onion in the in the chat here, which is awesome. So. I tried to draw the cover for my latest album, but realized it was better to pay somebody. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. That. You're a music artist? Yeah, you should send us some of your send, music. Shoot us a link. Yeah. We'd love to listen to it. Review it if you want. Half eaten salad one at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> That's the... Uh, or you can find us on the, the Instagrams. The, Insta the Instagrams, on the socials. Yeah, that's probably where you're more active. Yeah. But I have the... I don't mind throwing this in the live. It's a throwaway email in here. <laughs> that sounds bad. That sounds There's really a, bad. What I mean no, by that... No, it's specifically it's for speci the YouTube. It's, it's not, not that it's like yeah, personal it's not, yeah, email. It's not, that, it's not that it's a throwaway. I use it specifically for the channel. Oh, that's awesome. Three albums. Sweet. That's awesome. That's my email. Shoot me a link. I'd love to listen to it. I'd love to check it out. I like to, it's really like, it's cool to find new music, but especially when it's music from somebody that you've interacted with, that I think is also really cool, especially um, because it has a different level of enjoyment because yeah. it's somebody, even if it's through the internet like this, um, it's really cool uh, to be able to have that experience of like, hey, I know this person, um, which is neat. So, but yeah, that's that's my email for the channel specifically. Um, I I had removed it off of the main page for certain reasons, but uh, I don't mind throwing it in the chat there to for you to throw me a link. It'd be really cool. Yeah. Oh, I guess I guess too. I could probably go to his go go to their uh, go to their YouTube page, Mixed Onions. I would imagine it's there too. But um, some tunes are really up on YouTube. Oh, cool, sweet, awesome. I'll definitely check that out. That'd be awesome. And Alan says, it's a refreshing subject because for years on YouTube, I talked about nothing but the group Insane Clown, Posse, and related artists. So I'm happy to talk about music I really grew up with. Yeah, it's that that is one thing that's fun about doing this kind of thing is like connecting with other people that, you know, have the similar music taste. Because I mean, like people we know personally don't really share the same music taste. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, a lot of the like... A lot of the stuff that he listened to, like, before we got married, is stuff that I hadn't really ever heard of before. And so, like, you know, I, like, we've learned to love each other's music. I mean, there's still some of the stuff that he listens to that I just personally will probably just never like. <laughs> but for the most part, it's pretty equal in the music that we're able to enjoy together, I would say. Yeah, she will never, there will never be a point in our life that she will like bands like In Flames. Uh, <laughs> or Slipknot or things like that. So it's I I get a kick out of it. And I enjoy that kind of music. The a lot of the heavier stuff, but she it's not something that she'll ever get into, which is fine. It's it's a it's something I can still still enjoy by myself. So I have a lot of listening time that I get a chance to get a get to do. So it's not like I never get to listen to my music, <laughs> but thankfully she listens to some 41, which is my favorite. So a lot well, of, like a lot of music. PX. Yeah. So a lot of music that I consider my music, she still does listen yeah. to. So, but I also listen to such a broad range of music that it's, yeah. So I'm, I do like that my core 
music style she she is down for listening to which is awesome my see oh alan might see slipknot in october at the aftershock festival that's really cool i they were where were they um it's in the last couple of years i wanted to go see them go see them because they were i believe they were touring i think they would i think it was slipknot because that would be a really good show to be able to go see i think especially now i don't know like i think it'd be like the idea of having been able to see them younger would have been cool but at the same time i feel that I don't know, a lot of bands, sometimes their show progresses to a less impressive, but I feel that Slipknot would probably still be able to bring the energy at this point. Like a band like Disturbed, I really like their music, but some of the videos that I've seen of them live, David Draymond, he's, he's starting to seem like he's getting a bit tired. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't he's really not know. a young man. No, anymore. I know. And I don't really, I don't really know how to put that, but like, it's one of those things where it's, bands like disturbed they, they they seem like they're having a, a harder time with the, the life side of things um but um, the uh sorry i'm not exactly sure what's going on in the vertical thing so i'm just letting david read that because i can see that there's comments popping up but i can't read them from this distance okay you keep talking about yeah so um yeah, and so, okay, so, but I want to go the day when they're not playing because I've always wanted to see Slayer and Ministry and they're playing on the same day. Oh, yeah, I guess that would be kind of a hard choice if there's, like, both things that you want to see. But, um, I don't know if there's an issue on the other one. But, yeah, if <laughs> we had to actually restart the vertical live stream because we had gotten up like a bunch of like spam things. So I don't know if that's what's going on again. But if you want to just head over to the main channel, that's always an option too. So, yeah. Yeah, there was some kind of something. That's okay. You keep talking. Okay. But now I like, I don't know. I feel funny when I'm just like talking by myself. But, um... Some 41 played on this festival a few years ago. There we go. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so sorry. Okay. The um I had to I had to deal with the other comment. <clears throat> we had missed some from up here. So Carl Life had said, uh, my dad works in the music industry, so he knows lots of bands and music artists. That's really cool. Yeah, I think you've mentioned that before, which is awesome. Um, or has met them through other bands, which is really cool. Cool, awesome. And then we're back up. And then mixed onions. Uh, that's why I don't. That's why I don't do live. Lol. I couldn't handle the idiots. Yeah, it's gonna take a bit of getting used to, especially too because the channel is just us, so we yeah. don't have anybody to do moderation. And I also just figured out because it wouldn't let me scroll back to get the message. Oh, okay. So I fixed it. So because before it was set to just top messages, and now it's set to all the messages, oh, so okay. I can actually scroll back and through, remove whatever I need to, oh. and then if they comment or show back up. Right now, I just have the comment deleted, but I see. Can... Yeah, we we haven't ever really we've never had a problem with like bad or inappropriate or stupid comments until today. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, yeah, getting getting stuff going for this week technically was a lot easier, and then I I made the joke. I jinxed us. I said, okay, so what else is gonna go yeah. wrong? then because all of our video stuff we got set up right like right away but well this was uh, a challenging week just in general like even for the video to get uh stephanie had if you've watched the video you'll stephanie put a um disclaimer a disclaimer in there because the she had a migraine this week so it took a bit of uh getting things up and running uh, a little bit a little bit harder to get the video done um so but we did get it done which is awesome yeah. but uh yeah yeah but when I was editing, I realized that, like, I kept laughing at myself because, like, there were moments, like, there were so many clips I had to cut out this week because I would just, like, stop and start the camera because even though I didn't have a migraine, like, on the day that we recorded, I was, like, coming off of a migraine, so I call it, like, my migraine hangover, so it was just, like, I was still a little bit, like, weird, but... Yeah, Mixed Onion said, I think you can set an auto one, um, I see on other live streams, something called Nightbot. Oh. I'll have to look into that, because, yeah, because yeah, we have we have a filter set for the horizontal, 
that um, Stephanie assumed would go for the vertical yeah, one as well, but it doesn't seem doesn't to be seem to crossover. crossover between the two. So I guess that might be a kink. I don't know if that's a kink in their in their system. If that's something that they want to actually fix at some point. But yeah. we'll have to look into to see what kind of thing we can find. We're glad that we can actually do both because um, the vertical seems to have actually been able to bring us more people as well. So that way we can have more people join the community, mm -hmm. which is excellent. So be able to have a, a broader reach. Yeah. So sorry for that all promotion there. But yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know if you wanted to, because you're probably more familiar with the bands that Alan mentioned than I am. So that's why I was like, well, I don't know what to say. Because Slipknot is playing, but then there are bands that he would he wants to see, but they're playing on a day that they're not oh, playing. And then, I want to go to a day when they're not playing because I've always wanted to see Slayer. Yeah, Slayer would be a good show. They're, yeah, and they're touring again too. They've been out some shows. Um, and ministry, I don't know ministry, at least I don't think I know ministry, um, and they're playing the same day. I'll have to check them out, ministry, I don't think I know them. Um, there's a lot of bands too that I think that I don't, that I don't recognize the name of, and then I go listen to a song and be like, oh yeah, I know that song. Um, but I'm going to write that one down so I don't forget. But yeah, and also Mixed Onions in regards to the mod, that is something that we've been, well, at least I've been thinking about that, like at one point, like which of your, you know, I guess like, you know, regular viewers or whatever that you can get to be mods. I just, I like, <laughs> things have gone like so fast over the last couple weeks. So it's, it's just not, it's one of those things that I haven't had like full time to like look into. There's so many little yeah. like technical bits that it's like kind of gets overwhelming after a while like when you realize oh when i gotta do this and then too without being able to use the streaming software on the particular computer that we have that's kind of a bit of a hiccup because that's a little bit easier to keep everything like in one place and organized and all of that stuff and like integrated but it doesn't seem to want to run on our computer so you know, it's yeah. just little hiccups that we'll smooth out as time goes by because we're still new to we're still well, new to the live uh, stream. So well, and some of it too, like eventually we will probably try to get somebody in on it as well to help us moderate. Yeah. Um, but we're at this point, we're still such a small channel, and we haven't built up to a Excuse point me. to actually be able to to pass that out to somebody who can be here each and every week to be able to actually moderate and whatnot, and somebody that we know personally to to take care of that so but i mean for now it's not so bad we can now that i've figured out how to do it i can go ahead and take care of it on this end and then eventually yeah. as we get bigger and more people start joining in we'll be able to actually focus in on that so yeah. you're about to say something oh no i was reading the little the i was reading comments here and comments oh. here. <laughs> i was curious because you looked like you were you're i got something to say oh no i just gonna <laughs> Oh yeah, Mixed Onion said, uh, you say I like Metallica, but can't forgive Lars Ulrich uh, for his part taking Napster oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, because we've talked about that a few times. Yeah, Napster, Napster's still around, sort of. Well, it's and it's not in the same capacity as, as back in the day when, yeah. But uh, definitely a world of difference. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting, because the, the... The streaming world is, is such a weird frontier um and it's 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 really hard to kind of i guess navigate what the way things should and shouldn't be um i know a lot of streaming services get bad raps because of certain um policies that they have in place or how they pay their artists and stuff like that and when you look into it it like when you first hear about it a lot of it seems so cut and dry but then when you look into the details of just like the the little pieces it's it's there's so many parts that it's not as cut and dry as it seems and it's there's so many nuanced parts of it that come into play so many pieces that come into play i guess that would be the best way to put it so many pieces that come into play that there is no in my mind anyway a straight black and white answer of this is the way it should be this is the way it shouldn't be especially when you consider the direction that the music industry is going there's actually a video that i had wanted to do in that regards, but there's a lot of parts to it that I haven't been able to put together yet. Um, because of the fact that when it comes to streaming, if streaming goes away, then you have to go back to actual sales or digital sales and stuff like that, which puts the hands back in, puts the power back in the hands of the record companies, which they have a little bit of power right now, but not to the same level that yeah. they did in, you know, the last 50 years. Um, so, with streaming, that kind of has started putting more power back into the artist's hands, 
But at the same time, there's almost, it's almost too much of a shift because now the market's saturated and people can't make money at what they're doing. But at the same time, if you go backwards, it's this weird kind of cycle. It's a, it's a catch 22 really in, in a way. So it's, there really needs to be appropriate legislation in place to protect the artist. And I think that's where it comes down to is because a lot of music labels say, oh, we want to protect the artist. And really they don't give a rip about the artist. They want to protect their assets, yeah, their which money. at the same time is understandable. They want to protect their business, right? Like anybody in that position would want to be, would want to protect whatever, you know, that they are running. Right. So it's, I mean, you can't really begrudge in that. However, there is a level a line to be crossed and I think a lot of record labels do cross that because they screw over a lot of artists so there is no black and white and sorry all that from from Napster but like that I don't think there is a specific black and white answer to that but the end goal should be definitely to protect the artist yeah and in regards to what Alan said about stopping streaming because the bots came in and it was too much that's one thing that kind of is a little bit nerve-wracking and i know like bigger channels have um you know like subscribers only mode but i feel like that's not something we can really do at this point because you know i, I don't think enough of our subscribers watch the live streams but obviously that is something that would be helpful no. you know like I, th I think there's even like a time limit so, so you can't even like subscribe and start chatting right away you have to be subscribed for normally it's about 20 minutes before you can actually start yeah, joining so. in, something like that. in on the chat kind of thing. So, but I mean, most of the time we don't have a problem. <laughs> so, and especially like on, like we've never had a problem on a, like on the actual like mainstream that's just on the um, little vertical stream yeah, Ms. today. Mix on here uh, in the UK, I earn equivalent of seven cents for every dollar. Now, is that, um, is that per stream or is that per so many streams? Like what's the, what's the kind of, I guess, threshold for that? Cause I know that's the biggest, one of the biggest pieces to it is how much they get paid per how many streams. Cause it's only, I guess a lot of times, at least here in Canada, it's only a fraction of a cent per stream. And then too, you have to like, there's the different, there's so many different pieces to it. Um, so is that like that amount there? Is that per one stream or would that be per multiple streams? Um, that's streaming. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the, it's such a, it's such a. Yeah, streaming, that's, that would be a weird thing to, like, cause it was different before, right? Like when my sister had her demo all those years ago, it was like people had to actually buy it on iTunes, right? So then you purchase it once and you get a specific cut yeah. of that. Whereas that's so different that if it's just like anybody can listen to it so long as they have a subscription and then all the technicalities of working that out. So. Well, even with the charts, like for music charts, they just recently in the last few years actually started using streaming numbers as a part of your charting numbers. But it's it, the, the way they calculate it is you have to be a certain album per se has to be streamed so, so many, many times, times before it counts as a point, I guess, towards yeah. their streaming numbers um, to be considered for their, to be considered for the charts. Um, and that's just within the last few years. And the reason I had actually looked that up was a comment somebody had, had made because um, Meatloaf's album, Bad Out of Hell, had spent a little over nine years on the UK charts excuse me, sorry, um, a little over nine years on the UK charts and somebody had commented, well, the radio stations control that and how much it gets played. So I looked it up kind of to see how they gauge those numbers. And at that point in time, especially, it was based on album sales. It wasn't based on what was on the radio or things of that nature. It was strictly having to do with sales. And then that's when I came across that in the last few years, they count um, album sales, but then also a chunk of streaming depending on how much it gets streamed. So that's the other thing. And the movie companies have been having the same type of issues, right? Like different um, artists who will be in a movie and then there's no ruling as to how they have to get paid from the streaming side of things and if it's not in their contract. So it's, it's this whole, like, it's a big monster that I think they need more smaller artists in on the conversation because you have the big artists that <laughs> were like well we're against streaming for this reason and then there's some small artists that are on board with that but then there's other small artists that are like no we need this to get our music out sort of thing so i think to have that discussion if they're going to do anything legislative or anything of that nature they should really bring a lot of smaller artists in 
to have that conversation because you'll get a much better um, understanding, I think, than you would from from higher end, uh, not higher end, but like well known, like established artists. Don't bother with the record companies. Cool, awesome, independence, good. The a lot more. There was a push for a while from a lot of bands trying to be a bit more independent, but it didn't last very long because <laughs> they realized to keep the caliber that they needed of what they wanted to do, they needed the funds. And some artists would go to getting their their fans to fund it, which was cool. But at the end, they ended up needing to get all these other people to actually keep it to the level that they wanted. I think that's part of the challenge is it needs to come back to the bare bones, nitty gritty, where you have the young artists, like the the lesser known artists, independents. Thank you. Independent artists. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Independent artists being able to put out their stuff on, on the budget that they have and be able to try to get rid of record companies. And because even your independent labels, like as nice as, it, as nice as it is to have independent record labels, you still run into some of the same issues, but on a smaller scale. Well, thanks for joining us, Car Life. We'll see you next week. My my face is frozen on this one, and on it looks ours. really funny. Are we having laggy issues or glitching issues? Because on the one that he's playing it on, so we can read the comments, it's like frozen really bad. Here, open it back up. Okay, no lag at all. Okay, great. Uh, mixed onion. It was because I I don't know the way I had it was frozen. Oh, because yeah, I was frozen in a really weird face. Mixed onion has said my last single war is not my name made all the streaming and UK charts, but the wheelbarrow of money isn't happening. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to listen to some of your stuff this week. We'll, we'll try to get yeah. that wheelbarrow rolling. <laughs> and that's one thing, like, it's cool that, you, it's cool that you're a music artist, because that's one thing that we've really wanted to do it as well, um, especially as the channel grows, because right now, like, we have to kind of do a bit of focus on some big artists and things like that to be able to draw people to the channel. But as time builds up, we want to be able to kind of shift the focus to more independent artists, artists that are trying to make a name for themselves and that kind of thing. So that way we can help kind of weed through and, and help promote the, the ones that, at least on our side of things, that we enjoy, that we think yeah. deserve a shot. And I mean, right now we have, I think we're at 1,500 subs, a little over. So, I mean, we don't really have a pull with the industry in any way at all at the moment. But eventually, we would like to be at a spot where we can kind of have that interaction with newer artists and kind of help push them in that direction and, and give them some um, what is it? feedback. And no, whatnot. like when people get to see them, like oh. where it's like, there's a word I'm looking for. I can't think of it. Where it's like, hey, check out this artist. And then people are like, oh, hey, critically disdained, recommended yeah. this artist. We should go listen to them yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, which would be really cool. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to listening to some of your stuff this week. So, okay, so you've done music since you're 18, was very successful at UK. Oh, well, that's cool. You can check those out too. My sister actually, when she was younger, had done a recording demo. And, um, cause she, she, she writes her own music and stuff. And she had done this like forever. And then, so she finally, this was after we were already married and, whatnot she had recorded her first demo and it was great and she had actually gotten a lot of um you know i guess the itunes sales and stuff at the time from like places in japan and stuff which was crazy and it, it was exciting though but then um she ended up deciding it wasn't quite the road that she wanted to go down because it is it's a lot of it's a lot of work and especially mm -hmm. you know if you are doing it independently and trying to pave that way yourself like that's that's that that can be very expensive and it's you know you gotta really mm -hmm. want to do that in order to you know be successful and I mean that's like with anything in life right but it's you know I definitely commend you for doing <laughs> that on your own because I know that's not an easy thing to do uh, Alan the Clown here uh, said he stopped streaming uh, because they had a lot of bots come in. It was too much. Yeah, yeah I read that oh, earlier. Oh, was that earlier? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm behind the times here. Uh, that sounds really cool. I love to go to shows that are local only performances. Yeah, that's neat. Uh, it's it's nice when they do that. There's around this area where we're at, um, the local brewery is going to be doing a live local artist. No covers allowed, like only original music. Oh, really? Yeah, only original music 
kind of open mic night kind of thing. It's not going to be, sorry, it's not going to be an, I have a sneeze that's stuck in my face. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's not going to be an open mic, like you have to sign up ahead of time. Yeah. But the ruling is they have to be local and it has to be original music. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, uh, I can't remember what it is, sometime this, this month, next month. Anyway, it's coming up. But that's really neat. Yeah, it's nice to it's nice to get the local scene. Yeah, and I mean, we don't have like a whole lot. Like, there's not a whole lot of options here. But I, it was funny because after Car Life a few weeks ago had mentioned that one band, whose name Sloan. Sloan. It's like apparently they were doing something at like the community center or something here. Yeah. And I was like, what? But yeah, well, that I was think it's still funny. coming up. Oh, is it? I, I think so. It, it might have it might have already passed. There's a few comments in the. Oh yeah. The vertical. Those that the print is so tiny. Uh, McSunning said I was fed up of the complete harassment from recording companies. I could understand that. Um, where in Canada are you? I believe Ren's in Toronto. Yeah, we're just a few hours outside of Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, in that in that in that area. Um, yeah, I can understand. The MXPX is a band that I listen to, and I listen to Mike Carrera's podcast. Uh, he's the lead singer from the band, and. One of the things he talks about a lot of times is some of the issues that they've had with the record companies where they just got completely screwed. And even in the beginning of Sum 41, like they were pressured from the record company to put out, you know, once they made it, it was like, all right, you have this album. All right, we need another one. And we need it now. Like, and then, all right, we need another one where they were just like, all right, give us the music that you need, which I mean, gave us some really good albums, but at the same time can be very, could cramp the artistic style, right? Yeah. Especially if you're not feeling the music because a lot of artists and writers will do it from what they're feeling like whatever is coming at that moment what their emotions are telling them and kind of what they're living through and if you're not if you're having an okay time sometimes the art isn't going to be there and who knows and i mean if well, you're having a good yeah. time that's where pop music comes from <laughs> See, that's the thing like to me to write music on demand like i don't understand how people do that because it's such like a is everything okay did it drop i think it's just a bit laggy that's all because it said that it um uh oh there we go yeah no okay. it's it's, there. it's good okay i think so yeah that was weird it said that it couldn't connect to the internet yeah mixed onions it said bigger you are more more music or more tours yeah and then, oh, and then they now do dance music with a message. That's cool. Oh, that's, cool. that's really neat. There was a, I was in a drama class in high school. And one of the, the projects that we had to do was we had to write our own scene, but to music. So we had to pick a song or a collection of songs. And that was going to be kind of the theme of whatever it does, whatever it was that we were acting out. And it had to be mimed. So it was a mime kind of thing. So that's really cool because it also, there was a, a dude in our class who won because they also made it like a competition as well as a class project and <laughs> his thing had a his was kind of a his was a music video um live obviously because it was a drama class but with a message which is really neat so I, I really appreciate that kind of thing which is awesome that's cool but yeah back to the writing music thing because you're saying the sorry and then the whole internet thing happened um but yeah oh, i feel like that would be really difficult to have to write because i feel like even with like any piece of art you have to feel it in order to express mm -hmm. it. Like even with something like, you know, when I do my sewing, if I'm not feeling like necessarily inspired, then like I can still do it, but it's different than when I, you know, create something in my brain and then, you know, drape it on the mannequin and make the pattern that way. Like that's, that's such a different outcome than, oh, I have to sew this because I have to sew it, right? She's a seamstress. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of art is that way though, like feeling inspired to do it. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So Mixed Onion said, uh, Ren is music, theater, drama, art all in one. Awesome. Oh. Cool. I'm looking forward to checking that out. Cool. I'll have to watch the YouTube stuff then if that's the case, because I had saved it in the spot. I went and saved it in Spotify and I was like, oh, so, excuse me. So I'll have to definitely check that out on that, on that side of things. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That'll be cool. Um, yeah. And I can't, like, I can't write music. I've tried over the years to be like, oh, I'm going to write a song. Like, not necessarily like the, the music part, but like where I've tried to write lyrics or I've tried to write a rap song. And that is not art that is up my alley whatsoever. <laughs> it's just See, I was great with like creative writing, but like to put that to music 
And then like I can create tunes, but then to create lyrics that go, it just doesn't. So it's like one piece here, one piece here, but I can't like yeah. make the two things. Well, mix. and the thing is, I know enough people that know how to write music that if I could come up with a tune and lyrics to go with the tune, that I could just be like, yeah. here it is. And I could hum it and like give the lyrics and they could come up with the music. But I've, I, I had written poetry in high school and I came across it a couple years ago and it was very embarrassing. <laughs> very very embarrassing and nobody to this day knows how to find that poetry not even her i won't share it with anybody i don't know i found it i mean i'm the one that does all the organizing of all the crap in the storage online the online stuff? Uh, oh not the online oh yeah stuff. no no this i found a binder full no 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 this is online oh, okay. this is online the it's yeah that's funny the name of the website and the name of my username will die with me <laughs> I don't know about that. Now I want to know. Good luck. I know you have anything. <laughs> Wild horses couldn't track it from me. <laughs> yeah, but they're not me. That's true. But <laughs> I will die. I, I will. I will go to the grave with that information. <laughs> Just like my original YouTube channel, I will go to the grave with that information as well. It's like the aisle. aisle what do you mean? The one that? Yeah. You did before. Yeah, you know where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't share that with anybody now. Oh, it the, was cute. The Isle, Isle de la Muerte. Is that I think is what it's called. The island that only you can only oh. find if you know where it is. The island that can't be found less by those who knows where it already is or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, boy. No, those early videos were funny, but that's bef that's this one like YouTube was more about like doing like sketch comedy kind of thing than it was like what it is now, right? That was like in the early days of YouTube. Well, I was a different person too, like not a different <laughs> yeah. person, but like I was I had different viewpoints and thought processes. And you were young and stance. silly and goofy and young, you know, and young and dumb. <laughs> so, it was cute, but uh, yeah, that'll also go to the grave with me. Um, but anyway, the, this is, this is where I like to be, to be able to have <laughs> community, to be able to talk to people about, um, music, which is awesome. So I, I'm super excited about this. I also like <laughs> coffee's my jam too. Those are, those are the things I love. I've said before, and I'll say it again. I love sharing coffee and music. So to be able to talk about it and to find, like to come across different artists and to be shared, have artists shared with me. And I love sharing music. So. It's so awesome. Alan the Clown says, ah, oh, let's not talk about early YouTube channels, which makes me wonder, do you have one too? <laughs> uh, the early days of YouTube was great because it was just a bunch of, the wild like, most of it, you know, it was a bunch of young kids, young adults just being goofy. And like, I remember my, one of my friends early on, they had a channel their video series was called like guys with weapons and it was just it was goofy dumb videos and it was like you know that's when youtube was it was new it was i don't fun. know yeah you know before it was even like before julian smith and you know rent and link and all those guys right like and then that's how they ended up building their name right it was all those funny yeah. little like sketch things but it was good and it was funny and i, I miss comedy in that way right because it's not it's it, it's it's changed so much and obviously youtube is great because there's so much stuff on there but i do miss those like quirky little just bits of comedy like you know like or even like the sale cat like you know like what did i just what did sale. i just watch well, that's why i liked when we did the one history um where was the history was it the, the was it the taylor swift history where <laughs> kanye west snatched the microphone yeah. out of her hand and we had done I don't remember what the date for that one was, but we did a little like reenactment of yeah. it. And that was a lot of fun because we like that kind of stuff where it's just like, we like the information, but also we like to just really have a good time and to hopefully be entertaining as well, like informational and entertaining. So stayed in is better for 10 years and perfect his art. Hope you don't talk in your sleep and don't forget a wife always has one eye open and one ear listening. I used That's to talk in my sleep. True. I used to talk in my sleep. Yeah. I don't anymore, I don't think. He does. Do I talk in my sleep? Yeah. He what do I talk about? Does. I don't know. It's usually just nonsense, really. That's but... true. So it's not much different than when I'm awake. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, we've been married for a long time. Almost, almost, nearly 15 nearly years. Nearly 15 years. Yeah. The um I there's haven't not, there's there's no secret. If you've here. seen if you've seen Inception, <laughs> if you've seen the movie Inception, 
how a person can train their mind to not be infiltrated. That's what I've done with the information no, to that poetry website. Even. It's locked away in a vault inside my head that nobody can get to. <laughs> even if somebody, even if we were to dream share, oh, we'll you would dream not, share. you would I not find, you would not I be able to find it. that vault. That's so easy. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But I, that's it. But if it's on the same level as the other stuff, I read some of that stuff I don't in know, your binder. I don't know what binder you're talking about. <laughs> was it a notebook? No, it was a binder. And I was like, what are all these laminated? Oh, it's David's poems. Oh, my <laughs> It might be because my dad had a hold of hard copies for some oh, reason. Oh yeah, well that probably is one. I didn't read. I I read a couple and I was like, oh, okay. this this <laughs> this is oh this hurts. Very young David. <laughs> this hurts. <laughs> one of the, my one of my very first poems I still remember. <laughs> See, a lot of that stuff for me is long gone after the my my parents' house burnt down a couple years ago. So all of like my childhood stuff is like kaput. So even our copy, like, to come full circle back to the beginning, oh. the George Martin thing, that CD's gone now, too. That's how you get rid of stuff. I'll grab back out. <laughs> I gotta go burn my parents' house down. <laughs> so bad! <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> on air, on air. <laughs> on air, yeah. Watch out. <laughs> oh, they've got me. That They're was here. probably really loud. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if that was, uh... Oh, wait, what is that? Uh, if we see you with an eye patch <laughs> and a cast on your arm, we know she found out. <laughs> At that point, I just become a pirate, which is excellent. I'm like crying now. <laughs> this has been good. The lives get better each week, I think. Yeah. I, I it's enjoy. fun having the. It's fun It's nice to have inter interactions. It's We've said it a thousand yeah. times that it's it's so much fun to be able to actually be able to talk to people and have have repeat people come back. It's it's nice to have have regulars show up. And it'll be you know there will be those few that will forever remember as the OGs, yeah. you know? <laughs> which yeah. will be uh, excellent. So. Oh my goodness, one thirteen. I know it's been a good time. It's been a good time, oh, and then wow. uh, next week I'm not really sure what video. I'm not sure what video we're doing next week. We have a surprise coming. Yeah. We also have. Um, we also have to do the last album, which won't be next week. Um, but we also we'll have probably to do... talk about it live, though, right? We we're figuring that out. We're we, yeah. we're still deciding. We might do that. Yeah, we might not do that as a review in the way that we've done previously. We may do listen to it and then have our notes and then talk about it live um, instead of actually doing a recording. So instead of a release of a Friday video, we might do it as our Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Um, but yeah, so we have the final one and we also have our our summation of all the albums, which I don't know if we should do that before or after the release of the album because we'll have to place the double album I don't know. We'll figure we'll figure that out. So we still have to yeah. do the review of the final album. We have to do the other thing as well. Um, so yeah. But sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, what do you think about Derek finding the But I am so excited about Derek's book. I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I need to. Um, <laughs> We've but, had to order so much stuff for it. Yeah, like, it's I, like one week after another. I'm new so stuff I'm out. I'm so excited for him dropping book, and I'm really curious. Because I want to know, I I'm I, I want to know how personal he gets. Because yeah. a lot of times memoirs can get really like in depth and and dangerous for some people sometimes. So I want to know how in depth he's going to go with relationships in his life. Like what level is this memoir going to be? I don't know, but I'm I'm so excited to read it. Um, but I want to I want to I would like to get both a digital and a physical. Obviously, I want the physical copy. I want to make sure I have that. Um, but I would also at the yeah, same time want to maybe read. have a digital that way I can take it with me on the go or whatever. If there's a moment that I can read it on my phone, right. If I have time. Um, but I'm super pumped to be able to, to, to read that book. Yeah. I'm excited too. Especially um, after all of this stuff, but it's like, I mean, could you have released it before we did our series and we could have like cool. talked about it. Mixed Onion is uh, playing in Canada in oh, November. Awesome. Where? Cool. Where were you, uh, where are you going to be joining us? That'd be excellent. We usually get stuck in our town in like November and December because everything gets snowed Snow. in and we can't leave. 
But, but that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really neat. If we have a mild a mild winter, maybe. Well, November's not usually too bad. It's usually kind of... Uh, this year, that's when we got... Don't you remember? And we were like, we're going to have a bad winter because we got dumped with snow in November. And then there hasn't really been that much snow the rest of the winter. No, just with the last month. Normally, we're like snowed in all winter. But yeah, you don't remember? Mm -hmm. Huge snow piles. I don't remember that. Oh, it was like right after Halloween. I remember the Halloween snow. Yeah. I remember that. Um, but yeah, no, the snow around here is a nightmare usually. Usually the roads that come in and out of town um, get cut off. And there was one year, two years ago, no, year, so. Yeah, not this past December, 2022. But the one before so that. Christmas 2022, we had a snowstorm where our power's off for three and a half days. And so I, I, I used to work as a manager for a company in, in, in this, in the town and I worked Christmas Day that year, so I brought the whole family to the store because... Because I had built, like, forts in our house yeah. to keep us and it warm. Was, it was still freezing, so... Because it was dead of winter, and it was an insane storm. And the electric company knew the storm was coming and would probably have the power knocked out, and they didn't get crews to town yeah. before it happened. And they couldn't get through because the highways were blocked. So it was, like, three and a half days of this, so I brought them to work with me. They hung out in, in, in the break room, um... And then while well, I worked, and then when we came back that night, we're just like, oh, please, power be on. And so I went inside, and the power was on, and so I flipped on the outside light, and from inside the, hear, inside the car, I hear everybody go, yeah! Because <laughs> it was like, oh, that was miserable. But yeah, no, around here, usually the storms are awful. Yeah. I'm um, doing a festival called North by Northeast uh, first, which is a lot earlier. Oh, sweet. Oh. Cool. I look forward to checking mm -hmm. that out. Um, hopefully, hopefully there'll be some spots radar. near, yeah, hopefully there'll be some spots nearby we'd be able to come, come see you live, which yeah, would be awesome, that'd, that'd be, be cool. really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, then later in the year, Toronto, Montreal, oh, sweet, okay, so cool, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that then, yeah. because the, uh, we're only a few hours outside of Toronto, so yeah. that'd be really neat if we could come see, see you live, it'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. It'd be cool to start, like, you know. Interacting with people and meeting people yeah. and promoting people. Being the crowd. I know that person. <laughs> be, yeah, no, it'd be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. We're definitely going to keep our eyes open for yeah. that. Sweet. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and there's one of those awkward silences. Awkward silences are the best. Yeah. It's not as bad as the first, like when we first started doing lives because initially when we first started doing them, it takes kind of getting used to having the conversation like which way to have the conversation because when you're looking at a camera and like our faces and stuff like it's it's hard to know when to speak this way and kind of when to speak this way and then too like we have the comments which is awesome because then we can respond to those which it it's a little bit more of a kind of a, a lagged response I guess because we have to read them and, and whatnot <coughs> Excuse me. And then I always like want to reply to them right away. And then like he'll be like mid. That's usually the. It's usually when he's talking and I'll be like sitting there. I saw another comment drop. <laughs> I talk a lot. I have. When... Well, on the lives he talks a lot, but then in the videos when I'm editing, I'm always like, oh my god, David didn't say anything. <laughs> well, I talk a lot just in general. When we first got married, she go. We'd known each other for a couple of years at that point, and she go one day. She goes, you talk a lot. <laughs> And I said, yeah, you knew I talk a lot. And she goes, yeah, but I didn't know you talk this much. <laughs> um, apparently, her dad had told her uh, years ago before we were married, you before know, we had even a, met, you know, that when she was a teenager, apparently she was going to have to meet somebody who talked more than she does. And she found me. So I've, like, mellowed out a lot, though, like, over the years. But, like, when I was... Because the thing is, is that I would be telling my dad, you know, whatever stories when I'd be talking to my parents. And... I would always get like, you know, he would always say I like speak a mile a minute because I'd get like so excited and be like talking really, really fast. And like, I just wouldn't stop talking. And so that's where that was <laughs> coming from. But yeah. And then he, he does. Yeah. Talk well, I always have something to say. And sometimes I'm very verbose. So I can have a tendency to say the same thing multiple ways. She has let me know that I do this. Um, and so, but I always have a lot to say. So I, that's actually one thing that I'm really excited about because a lot of times there's music that I have that I like to talk about that has something I want to say, but I don't want to do a full video about. So I recently, uh, got a vent phone holder. So that way I can prop my phone up, throw on a live. And as I'm driving, paying attention, making sure that I'm doing things legally, uh, <laughs> for any cops that may be watching, um, 
I can do a live, like throw up a live, and then as I'm driving, talk about a particular piece of music that maybe I've listened to, or an album that I would like to talk about, but I don't have a full review, but I have more to say than just a short. Um, so yeah, on maybe in between jobs or on the way to work and stuff like that. So that'll be something, because like I said, I always have something to say, and it doesn't always necessarily fit within a full length video concept. So it's, it's something that I'm, looking forward to experimenting with this week. So if you see me randomly go live during the week, that's probably what it is, so. Um, my face is definitely for radio. Wait, no, there's more comments. Oh, I missed the. Oh, Calgary. See, have you ever been to Canada before? Because, so we, we actually used to live on the West Coast, but we've driven through the whole thing at this point, like all the way from BC through Prince Edward Island. And I actually never realized just like how much of Canada is really beautiful, but especially like out West, like man, I miss the mountains. So if you have like some time while you're there to do like some sightseeing, Check them out. I highly recommend it because it is gorgeous there. And then also Prince Edward Island is like walking into a fairy tale. It's, it's so pretty. They also said, I had a plan, uh, I had a plan of if I did a live, I would have cardboard cut out of me and then chat from behind the sofa. <laughs> My face is definitely for radio. That's funny. Oh, I bet you're probably okay. See, I hate being, see, I loved doing like theater acting, but being on a video was so nerve wracking for me. Cause I just, I don't like watching myself. I don't like, it's, it's such a weird thing, but even like editing, listening to myself talk, like that's why like I love doing you know live performances but doing a video thing it's just such a it's such a weird thing to get used to it's a, it definitely takes getting yeah. used to when I first started editing my videos when I started the channel a couple of years ago I hated listening to my voice I still don't like listening to my voice but I've gotten used to it so it's something that I can listen to without because before I was just like oh oh I can't stand it <laughs> and now I was just like all right it's my voice whatever <laughs> um they all they've never been to Canada yeah. so that well that's cool. exciting it's there, there's a lot that is beautiful here, and then there's some that's not so beautiful. So yeah, yeah we went to Prince Edward Island a few and, years ago, and it was amazing. Just so pretty. I had been there when I was a kid. My parents had, had gone because they were huge. It's definitely um, the most magical place in Canada. Yeah, oh, 100%. Uh, my parents were a huge... Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables fans. So one year for my parents' anniversary, we went to Prince Edward Island. But anyway, the, the couple years ago, we went, and on our way back, we got back in Ontario, and we were driving through. We are just like man, this place sucks. <laughs> yeah. Just because it, Prince PEI was just so beautiful that it was, yeah. it was it, being back in Ontario, like Ontario's not ugly, but when you have that comparison, it, it just did not compare whatsoever. It's, it's visuals were not comparable. Oh, you did a tour of USA last year. Never again. Yeah. So he's originally from, he was born and raised in California. Yeah. Just outside um, of San Francisco. And then we were on a traveling drama tour thing. And I mean, we've driven across the States a few times. And yeah, it's definitely, it's different. You know, when I went to school in the States, that was one thing that was like shocking. Like, I never realized how much of a culture shock it would be. But it really is so different. Well, even just from one area of States to the other. I remember when I moved to Florida, it was very odd because I felt like I was in a movie. Like, it was something that I just... Because when you see people in, like, when you see people in the South in movies, you get this visual in your head of, like, ah, people aren't actually like that. And then you get to the South, and they're exactly like that. I felt like I was driving through a movie. It was so weird. I mean, obviously, there's lots of nice people. Right? Oh, absolutely. But just, it's, it's such a different culture. Oh, 100%. Right? And then the way manners are treated here versus there as, you know, it's, it's a lot different. Well, I, I saying, mean, like I have, I, when we were in California, we mostly stayed within like family stuff. So yeah. I wasn't exposed to, I guess the, aside from going to, um, the pier, right? Yeah. When we went to bird shit um, on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy with the, um, the, what was this cat? Oh yeah, all his, all proceeds go to the cat. But his parents were abducted by something. Oh, that was a different one. Yeah, parents I know, abducted, man. It was an experience. Parents abducted <laughs> by pigeons. <laughs> like, and I grew up outside of Toronto, so it's like it's not like I'm like foreign to big cities, but big cities in America are definitely way different than big cities in Canada. Uh, Alan said, uh, yeah, I always hated the sound of my voice until I had to yeah. get used to it for YouTube. Hundred percent. I totally understand and that. Bay Area, yeah. <laughs> You can take the boy out of the bay, but you can't take the bay out of the boy. I will forever be a bay boy. Well, that's why I made the... <laughs> bay boy. Bay boy. 
<laughs> so I made like our little logo. I've got like the maple leaf and then the little NorCal, NorCal star. NorCal star. Alan will know the NorCal star. When I tell people, when I say the NorCal star, they'll be like, huh? What's that? I'll be like, the Nor. Let me show you. And I'll pull up the NorCal star and be like, that's NorCal star, which yeah. is basically for those who are not from the California Bay Area or from California. The NorCal star is basically the nautical star, yeah. sort of. It's the five pointed nautical star, basically. It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's it's a it's a slight bit different. Um, but yeah, no, that's why in the in our logo, if you look, there is that star there, and that's the NorCal star. If, or even if you just Google NorCal star, it'll pop right up, and you'll just be like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah. Oh, I keep having hiccups. I am sorry. That's okay. Ugh, that one was not quiet. <laughs> well, it's like. Um, there's another one. Sorry, there's another one down there. That's okay. Uh, every other person, <laughs> Karen, uh, right UK got a very good so, social housing. Uh, Karen, imitated from Canada. One of our neighbors is 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 definitely a Karen. Oh yeah. And there was one time where this incident happened with one of the delivery drivers, and <laughs> I felt so bad for the guy. And I ended up like because I had heard that he had gotten reported to his supervisor or whatever and I ended up saying like and he didn't even do anything wrong and so I ended up saying you know like if he needed um like if he needed any kind of because he came to our house afterwards and I was like I don't know if you need any type of like assurance that like things or whatever and and he ended up telling me that he actually just like called her Karen to her face <laughs> And I was like, yeah, well, that, 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 that's pretty accurate. So yeah, we do have them here. Sorry it's for anybody whose name is much. Karen. We know yeah. that you're not necessarily in that stereotype. Yeah. Necessarily. Yeah. I've seen a few different names thrown around for that type of behavior lately, though. Like people are starting, like Janet was another one that I had seen recently in regards to that type of attitude. That's um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny. Alan said very popular tattoo for the North oh. Star. 100%. <laughs> Buddy of mine got two of them right here. And another couple of people I knew got them on their back for their for their brother who had passed away. Yeah, the, so many people I know, so many people who had the NorCal Star tattoo. <laughs> I do not have that tattoo. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. It's it's very popular, and it's so weird. I think I think that was one of the strangest things for me uh, moving out of California was the idea that people outside of california did not know california culture things like the norcal star or different ways of speaking like going somewhere and saying hella and people are just like huh like it's more widespread now like it's more of a thing that more people around do but that was a very definitive like yeah. oh you're from northern california type way of speaking or like you'd bring up things and i was like yeah we didn't do that here <laughs> it's like no everybody knew this i was like no I'm pretty sure that was like isolated to your area. But then there's things where, you know, that were like, I mean, he didn't have Smarties, like, which is a Canadian chocolate or I get, I don't know if they have them in the UK as well. They, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we consider Canadian is actually just British. British. Um, but the chocolate, the candy coated milk chocolates, when they taste completely different than M&Ms, but Smarties to him are what we in Canada call rockets, rockets. which are those like Chucky candies. Which are my um, favorite. I love those still. So, um, okay, sorry. There's a few things here. So that's interesting what you said about the housing. Everyone a house with a garden and the crime rate decreased by 40. Because that's one thing. Like high rise, high rise buildings, I feel like a lot of the times can be kind of asking for trouble because it's like so many people and such a small amount of space. And I definitely like... The difference in living between there versus living out sorry i'm talking and i didn't even give the context for this um mixed onions had said basically they knocked down all the high rise high rises down in one area of london and gave everyone a house etc with a garden and the crime rate decreased by 40 percent oh wow which um okay yeah and they have smarties there too but then the other thing that uh they asked was are you an honorable canadian now and he actually became a full-fledged canadian two years ago Three? Three years ago? Three, three. It was a long process, though, because we had started it, and he was a permanent resident, and it was initially supposed to take five years. And then in the middle of it, right before we were up for him being a full citizen, government changed, and they ended up changing the laws. The laws. They extended so, it. So, and the problem is, they didn't, it wasn't from this point forward, 
it was anybody who was already in the process it now affected them too so it basically restarted his time so even though he's been in canada now for nearly 15 years he only became a canadian citizen like three years two is it two years or three years ago anyways it was very recent it was uh, during covid his <clears throat> his um i think it, his yeah, initiation was through zoom initiation you've been initiated yeah so which was crazy <laughs> Um, Alan had said, <laughs> Alan had said here, he's getting the, the NorCal tattoo soon with the hometown of oh. Mountain View. That's awesome. That'll be really cool. I'd be, I'd, I'd like to see that. I like tattoo art. My buddy of mine from Florida wanted to be a tattoo artist. He never ended up doing it, but the, uh, he, he was a really good tattoo artist. So I really, I really, yeah. oh, you should grab the thing. It's some 41 related and oh. everything. Yeah. I'll grab it in just a second. Um, and yeah, yeah. hella. Yeah. Yeah. So many places steal. So Alan had said, yep, hella. I always have to brag to my friend in Ohio that that's our language, 100%. And I love that people like, the, I don't know if you listen to any rap or hip hop, um, but E-40, which you're from, you're from that area, so you probably, probably know. E-40 talks about it all the time, how all these other rappers use his language. And it's just like, there's so many things that came from California, specifically in Northern California that people are like, oh yeah, it's like, yeah, no, that was ours first. Just saying, absolutely. And no, he does not yet have a Mountie uniform and a horse in the yard. However, I'm pretty sure that he would get along great with Dudley Do Right. Uh, yes, we, <laughs> we, we would be best friends. Um, but yeah, here, I'm gonna show this over here first. Let's see, is that good? See, it's, um, it's actually the quote from With Me, it says, I am nothing without you. And then it's got like, you know, our rings and stuff. But that's what his friend did. I'll show it over here too. I don't know. The lighting's pretty bad over here. But yeah. It looked pretty good in the, even from the, when you first showed it. Yeah. Um, oh, you met E40 at a record store signing? That's really cool. The, oh. I would love to meet E40. He, meet E40. He's actually, um, when it comes to rappers, he's actually my favorite. Like, I know he's not necessarily like, the best rapper but i love e40 and i love his music i was it's gonna so cut good. you off yeah because yes that time difference is crazy but thank you so much for joining us here and it was great chatting with you too so you have a good night have a good night see mixed you later audience. mixed audience so yeah um like and i <laughs> so and i've talked about this in on past lives and I, I don't know if it was one where where you were here alan but there was for the 50th anniversary of hip-hop Billboard had released their top 50 rappers of all time. <laughs> of all time. Of all time. And this, this kills me because they put E-40 at number 41. And it's just like, okay, if you're closer to the front of the list, if you're at like number four, or number five, where you get placed is very important because it's like, all right, you're that close to that space. It, it makes a difference. But if you're that close to 50, <laughs> and your name is E40, give him the 40 spot for crying out loud. Like 41, like that's just insulting. It's like, hey, you were in the back half of this, which is fine. You made the top. Maybe 50 it was list. just somebody who had a bandana. But it's just like, all right, you get it. You made the list. It's great. You're at the backside, and we're going to put you right on number 40. It's like, why? Come on, put him on 40. Like 41. <laughs> they had one job. Yeah, yeah exactly. they did. They had one job. And that's what they did. So amazing. And to this day, it drives me crazy. I had I had released a short about it and everything because I just I didn't understand. Because it's just like it's right there, man. Like I wonder if he looked at I wonder if he saw it and was just like, really? <laughs> like, blew my mind. Yeah, they had one job and that's ugh, yeah. ugh, it drives me. I, to this day, I still don't understand. Like, I they ended up putting to they ended up putting um, Jay Z. I think it was Jay Z at number one, which is fair enough. I like I, I like some of his stuff. I wouldn't for myself. I wouldn't put him at number one, but I understand why they did. Um, but yeah, no, it's t t t I'll never get over that. E forty at number forty one. It's just one over. It's all they had to do. But anyway, I. As they say, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Rap is one thing, like, I enjoy rap. Like, rock is, if I had to pick a genre to listen to for the rest of my life, punk rock would be that genre. However, because of where I grew up, everybody listened to rock, they listened to rap, so I grew up listening to rap music as well. And right now, there's not a whole lot of rap music that I find is very good. Um... I wouldn't go as far to say that rap is dead, 
but it's it's not doing too well. It's kind of sick right now, I guess you would say. It's it's unhealthy. Um, and Joyner Lucas just recently released a new album on Friday, and he, in my opinion, is one of the best rappers out there right now. And it was very refreshing to listen to his album because some of the new albums that have come out recently, Kanye West's new album, um, music that the game has been putting out, a lot of the rap nowadays just, it's not, it's not very good. Like, it's not bad, but it's not, I don't know, it's not enjoyable, I think. There's a lot of artists putting out very long, very long records where it's almost they're saturating the market, but with just mediocre stuff that you have to sift through and you can't really find the ones that are really good. And overall, Joyner Lucas's new album was really good. And I was going to do a short about it the other day, but I, I, I ran or on Friday when I listened to it, but I ran out of time. Um, so I've been I've been really kind of listening through some old rap music to kind of refresh my mind on what I what I grew up listening to. So that way, when I approach the new stuff, I can kind of have that contrast to what I'm familiar with to like fresh in my mind. Right. So that way it's not like, oh, I remember this being great and go back and listen to it. It actually sucked. Right. Um, so I've been refreshing my mind to make sure that I have an understanding that the music was as good as I remembered as I continue to kind of hear what the new stuff coming out is because if something needs to happen in, in rap, otherwise it's going to, that music form is just really going to go downhill from here. Well, I think that too is, it doesn't have as a, it's such a niche thing, right? Like it doesn't have as much of a widespread as like rock does because it is more, you know, um, cultural. Yeah. Right. Like whereas rock, I feel like there's, there's so many different versions of rock. And that's one of the things that just kind of like can, you know, touch different people in so many ways. And it's kind of like the general, like, I guess like, you know, even though pop is the popular music, right? Like rock is more of the things that people can like, I guess, relate to on that level and just kind of be timeless because it is something that's constantly evolving where I don't feel that because rap has such a specific unique sound it can't evolve in the same way that rock can you okay <laughs> yeah no I was process I was processing what you were saying okay. um but I, I don't know at the same time I almost wonder because there are so many sounds that we have yet to discover, but we don't know that we have yet to discover them because we haven't discovered them yet. So there could be an infinite amount of sounds and music and things that could be found and created that we're just unaware of. So I think I wouldn't go as far to say as it doesn't have the potential to evolve in the same way rock does. We just haven't discovered in the ways that it's going to be or the way that it could be. Um, because there's, I think it's just a matter of, music has just has to go in, ebb, in these up and down kind of rotations, because when you get those rotations of music, when it takes those low points for an artist to come around and make a difference, and then it kind of comes back into the mainstream because there's a new way of presenting the art form that people are able to get behind. Well, and it's cyclical with what's, you know, with historical events and the yeah. time and all of that stuff too, right? What's relevant today isn't going to be relevant in ten years from now. Yeah, and with the with the with the current, unless it's under glass here with the <laughs> with the current political climate, I think rock music is going to really start coming back into the mainstream in comparison to a lot of the stuff that's yeah. out there because there's a lot of fake and phony and and just not really great music out there, and I think people are looking for something that's more real and rock music and even rap music as well because mm -hmm. of its origin from the streets and where it came from and the the history behind it, it is more of a real art form than pop music is. Yeah, well, there's more of that story and the emotional connection piece. Well, especially when you look back... In both of those genres. Especially when you look back at some of the early interviews from Ice Cube and stuff like that, people had a, a much better understanding of rap music then than they do now. Because if you look at interviews where they went out on the streets and they talked to kids, where they'd be like, hey, do you listen? Do you like Ice Cube? And they're like, yeah, we listen, you know, we listen to him. And they're like, what's his music about? And they would basically say yeah he's telling us don't do the stuff on the streets like even though a lot of the stuff he's rapping about would be considered violent misogynistic and all these types of things what he's rapping about is showing what's happening on the streets mm -hmm. so that way kids growing up know that they can take a different path yeah it's not glorifying it it's saying hey this is this is what i've been exposed to this is my life and don't follow these things yeah and it's such a big misunderstanding and that's where i think rap music it right now is having such a hard time because 
it's not from that perspective. It's taking the art form and applying pop music principles mm. to it. Whereas when you listen to somebody like Joyner Lucas, his background, he is somebody like, I would, okay, I compare him, this is not a fair comparison, but for sake of example, when you have somebody like Drake from Vancouver, who was on Degrassi, like he's this, he's just a person. And then he goes into rap music and then you have somebody like Joyner Lucas um, or even like Ice Cube, you know, people who came from the streets, like their music, they could create the same type of music but this is like the Drake music is getting the, the pop um, treatment. treatment. Thank you. The pop treatment, whereas somebody like Ice Cube is going to be more from the streets and that kind of perspective. So this is going to be more real than what this is. So eventually people like Drake are going to disappear and go away. But if they are continually being what's propped up in the rap industry, the rap music art form will eventually decline. But then you'll have to get people from the streets, people who actually have lived in 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 a culture that fits within rap music it'll bring that back up because it's a very important art form culturally especially within north america to actually present things and um kind of make aware for people what's going on in the real world mm. and i think that's the difference the rap music the best rap music demonstrates what's happening on on the streets and society and politically whereas rock music is more of a all right, we see what they're saying in rap music. Let's do something about it. <laughs> so they, I think a lot of ways they go hand in hand, which is, I think is why when you get things like rap metal or um, different artists who are a mixture of rock and rap, they go so well together is because you're fusing those two elements together to create a completely different mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one of the reasons they work so well together. Whereas pop rock, It'll depend on the person and whatnot, and it, it it works for an enjoyment and for a period of time. Whereas a lot of the other rap, rock, and like ones that mix the two together are timeless in a lot of ways. And I think that is the comparison that, from your point of rap music, has like has a harder time evolve. It's not. I don't think it's that it can't evolve. I just think it has a harder time because of the ebb and flow that it has to go through. I think it's interesting about pop rock, though, especially like, you know, looking at Sum 41, for example, right? When you have the all killer, no filler uh, album and that lighter sound. And it is, it's that, it's still coming from a place of genuine experience, right? And realness, but it's that more immature and naive outlook. And then as they progress with their sound, as they progress with their music and the themes got more serious, it did start going into the more harder rock. But it's kind of interesting mm. that even though it is, you know, more like the pop rock, if you want to call it that, like it's still not devoid of everything as a lot of like major pop music is. It still has the the human experience there. It's just on a much less serious level. But it's mm. still relatable and it's you know, it's still there. Yeah. Alan here can, yeah, Alan here had said, there. uh I listen to I don't listen to music that my parents would play, Beastie Boys, Cypress Hill, good music. Um, stuff like that, and I listen to much more. Uh, still, old rap, but more than I used to. Yeah, old rap is 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 really good. I love I love listening to old rap. And he also said, uh, Lincoln Park is one of the main, main reasons. Yeah, I think so. Main Sorry, the little heart. The little hearts blocks, part blocks of some of the comments sometimes. Uh, the main reasons I got into rap more than I did back then. Yeah, Lincoln Park's really good. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a history on Tenacious D, and then after that will be uh, Lincoln Park history. So we'll we'll be getting getting into that very soon. Um, so that's in the, the future of, of the channel. So those videos will be just me. Uh, Stephanie will still join me for the lives. Yeah. So she'll still be here for the Saturday evenings. But the, those history videos will be me going through those histories. So. Yeah. And they probably won't be as long because they'll just be you talking. <laughs> Which is surprising because I can, I can, as we've just seen, I can talk a lot. Um, so yeah, so they probably won't be as long. But too, that's because I'm really hoping to extend these longer than some of my past yeah. reviews because I'm going to try to get more details. Because the Tenacious D one, that may... I'm actually looking forward to that. I don't know how long of that, how long of a series that's going to be. Um, I don't see it being more than three. Um, but if I do it longer, it very well could just be one long video. Or I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm still going through the history and taking notes and figuring out what pieces I'm going to cover. I may do it similar to how we did the Sum 41 series where we do up, where I do up to an album, to a next album, to next album kind of thing. But 
So yeah, my first introduction to Tenacious D was actually my cousin's. And it was funny because then years later, you know, he, he had showed me that too. And it's just, it's great because like Jack Black really is so talented, just like, you know, musically and with his acting and Kyle everything. Kyle Gass too is an yeah. amazing guitar player. <laughs> and it's just like, but the great thing is, is that there is that like humor element to his music too. And it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing though, because like when you listen to him, like he really can sing, right? Like even with the Bowser song, right? Like everybody was going crazy over that. And like when you, I, I watched a few breakdowns of that from like vocal coaches and stuff. And they were so impressed with all of the, like, I guess the technique he was using. And they were like, does he even realizing he's using this technique or is it just something that, you know, he fooled around with and like figured it out. But like, yeah, it's just, it's cool because he's so... He's so talented and he totally could have been like a serious rock star if he had wanted to. But I love the, I love the route that he took instead. And it's just, it's, the, it's great. The route he took has also made it really hard for research because <laughs> you have like, you, when looking at interviews, you have to watch the real inter like watch the interviews. You can't read the interviews because if you read it, you can't tell what's real yeah. and what's not you have to actually kind of watch. And even still, then it's hard to tell what they're being legit about. Like there was an interview where, I don't remember what talk show it was, but anyway, they were like, oh yeah, Kyle, you went to, to you, Juilliard. To Juilliard. Was their he's, earliest graduate. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, absolutely. And it was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I looked into it further. People <laughs> believed it. And for a couple of years later, he had to admit, no, I didn't go to Juilliard. Yeah. And they didn't even have a guitar program at that point when he so was actually funny. learning music. So, but what, well, I don't want to say anything about it because it'd be part yeah. of the history. I don't want to put out too much. Um, but yeah, no, Tenacious D is, is awesome. And yeah, Jack Black is absolutely brilliant. And yeah. even as he's getting older, he still has so much energy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And he reminds me of my uncle. I don't know where he gets all this energy because it's, it's so much when you watch even just the music video for their cover of Baby One More Time, so like, he has so much. It's crazy. And the and behind the scenes, like people who were filming it while it was going on because he was actually doing it at the premiere. It's so funny. But Yeah, the... Um, uh, oh, sorry. That that triggered. Yes, uh, he wants to do another... Alan said he wants to do another School of Rock. Oh. Rock yeah, I, I saw that today. Um, yes, he I said he's open to it as long as Mike White writes the script and does the direct that like would be awesome. Mike White has to be That movie's so good. Yeah, Mike White has to be attached to it. That's the only way he'll do it. But he said he will if they can get him. And if they do, then they're going to do it, which would be amazing. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen it, but I can't remember which video it was of our series, but there was <laughs> I ended up clipping some of School of Rock in there because of something he said. And there were so many other spots, I, I didn't want to do it overkill. But it was just, it was so perfect. And yeah, those movies, they're great. Yeah, and I then I ended up watching, sorry, I cut you sorry. off again. But I ended up going back and watching like the little reunion videos. And then that that was kind of sad though because of um, Freddie, Freddie, yeah, Fre Frankie. Yeah, Freddie, Freddie died. Yeah, um, but watching those videos with them all grown up, playing all this stuff together, it was it was great. Uh, I love their other guitar player, <laughs> Antichrist. The, the oh, speaking of, um, okay, this is a, this this one's for free, but then you gotta watch the Tenacious D history. Dave Grohl did the drums on their debut album. I I have started reading an interview. It was really hard to follow. I would like to watch a video interview if they have it. I was reading an interview where they were talking about how yeah, Dave, the way they talk that would be hard. How to Dave read Grohl, interview. how Dave Grohl came to be because it was an interview with I guess Dave Grohl interviewed them and they talked about how Dave Grohl did the drums and it was one of those things where it's just like I couldn't I couldn't read it. It was impossible to read, um, but that was a cool thing that I, he he was he did it on their original album, <laughs> which is cool. So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into it because there's there's so much. Yeah, Freddie, yeah, Freddie, if you want uh, well, I mean, it's been long enough. Yeah. Uh, Alan said, uh, I just found, found out, Alan just found out about Freddie a few months ago from yeah. School of Rock, which, yeah, I know it's really unfortunate because he was, he was such an important part of that movie too, like, when you talk about that aspect, but yeah, I know the fact that. that yeah, and I think he was my age too, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we were all around the same age yeah. as those other kids. Some of them were younger, but. Yeah. They're all basically the same age for the most part. And uh, the two. I think it's Frankie is his name, the big kid, one of the security guys, and the girl, one of the singers, uh, are in a relationship. Oh, yeah, the blonde, the little blonde girl. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, I can't remember. His name is Frankie, right? 
Was it? I don't remember. I don't remember. But anyway, yeah, those two were in a relationship, which was really neat. Like, they're still in a relationship. It's funny, like, when you hear about it, it's like, oh, yeah, they were at the time, well, whatever, right? But the fact that down the road, yeah. they're still together, it's just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really neat. Wait, because that movie's pretty old now. It was funny watching that again and see how young he was. He was my age. <laughs> I think. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because he's been around, because uh, Kyle and... Um, Jack initially met in the 80s. Oh. Like late 80s. Um, so he's been around a long time because he was also, Jack Black was also in, it was a small part, but he was um, in uh, Cable Guy with Jim Carrey. And he played a smaller part and completely different from what we know him now because mm. it's more of a, a straight laced kind of kind of character. Like he's not a comedic character at all in that movie. Um, but yeah, then that he's really young. Like really young, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he's around my age, like early thirties, um, in School of Rock. Because I looked that up, I looked that up because it's it's interesting to look back at things either like movies that I grew up with, or remember from from my youth, and then to find out what age they are and realize that a lot of them are either our age or younger <sighs> in movies that we watched. Where it's like, oh no, they yeah. seemed so old at the time, and us, oh now we're at the same age. Yeah, looking back and then being, oh, they're so young here. How old, how old are they? <laughs> and then realizing you don't look as young, or you don't feel like you look as young as they did. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Um, Alan said, oh, the Annie Yeah, the dollar. Annie, because yeah. she sings thought, the song. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. I just realized you didn't end up shaving again. So yeah, you know, I didn't like, shave It's different for people. Summer. Summer's my age. Uh, Cosgrove. Oh. Yeah, Cosgrove, the iCarly girl. <laughs> Summer, you're the you're the you're the whatever <laughs> factotum. <laughs> factotum. <laughs> um, that's such a good movie. So good. Yeah, no, I didn't shave this week. I'm shaving until the beginning of April, and then I'm gonna let my just beard come back again. just for fun. I but, needed a change. Like like the like how I've been kind of bored with like different music, trying to find something new to listen to. Um, I was bored with my face, so. <laughs> I mean, Which I, it was weird because he was like clean shaven and I haven't seen him clean shaven in years. Like 15 years. I shaved more in the last week than I shaved in the last 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was weird because that was one of the, well, it was because he kept getting the lookalike comments, right? And then I found that's out that the guy. Even, that's not even why I did it. <laughs> but the guy who people were saying he looked like had also shaved the same week. So that was kind of funny. But then when we had we ended up talking about that, and then we mentioned the Drake Bell lookalike thing, and then something showed up, and I after he clean shaved, I was watching some thing, and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys still look alike. <laughs> it was really weird. Except he's got lighter hair, obviously. But. Yeah. Well, and then we watched the um, on this Discovery the Plus documentary, the, yeah, the documentary. Uh, Quiet on Set documentary that they that they released. Yeah. And, and even like his little baby that. pictures looked like him. It's weird. It's like a long lost brother or something. Yeah. See, strangely enough, that's one thing that I could see um, because he looks more so than me. He looks like when my dad was young. So when my dad was in his early twenties, that's Drake Bell looks like him. But also, I look like my dad. I look a lot like my dad. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that documentary was really very frustrating. Yeah, and heartbreaking, and just like, especially like for me as a parent, like I can't imagine, like how did so many parents just stay quiet? Like I followed Chrissy Carlson Romano for a while on, you know, when she, when she came back, like on Instagram and YouTube. Like I mean, now she's pretty big, and she's got all kinds of podcasts again. But in case you don't know, she was from um, she was Ren on Even Stevens, and she played Kim Possible. And so she had started talking about a lot of this stuff. Like she had a decent experience uh, at Disney because her parents, you know, her mother, her mother was very involved and protective. And um, so thankfully she came out more or less unscathed in the grand scheme of things. But she's interviewed a lot of child actors and just a lot of those things being, you know, exposed over time. And um, the uh, Alexa... Nicholas is that her name I think she had been on her podcast too and so like a lot of this stuff I'd been starting to hear about over the last few years but then like watching that documentary like it was like I knew things were bad but like the level of bad they were was just yeah. like 
it, I just don't know how there were so many parents supposedly there all the time and none of them said anything. Like if anybody treated my child like that, you could be sure I'm going to be saying something. But about it also it. makes sense too. Like when you see things like back when the Me Too movement was was really big and all these people were coming out with these different accusations. And one of the things that you hear a lot when that kind of thing happens, well, why did nobody say anything before? But when you watch that documentary, you can see like people are scared for careers, they're scared for whatever, right? Like their livelihoods are at stake a lot of times, so they don't say anything. And then think about it at a time, let's say you, somebody owes you money, for example, and it's just like, in the moment, it's like, oh, they owe me five bucks. But then a few months later, if you haven't asked for the money, to say something now would just be weird and awkward and uncomfortable for you, right? So the longer that they, a person that maybe they went through some kind of horrific, whatever it may be, down the road, once it's passed, they are probably in their own minds thinking, wow, it's too late now, mm -hmm. right? So once that spark kind of happens and people have the opportunity, then people become brave because like, oh, they said something, I should say something, right? So it, it makes sense that it'll happen in waves where all of a sudden there's a slew of people coming forward with atrocities or any kind of issue that may have happened um, or abuse, right? Um, so that documentary, I think, really shed a light on that aspect as to why it seems to come in waves, right? Well, I ended up watching um, Dan Schneider's response to it afterwards. And, I mean, well, like, he seemed fairly genuine in saying how, like, how, like, basically having that mirror pointed back at him and saying, man, like, if I could go back and change things, I would. And, like, you know, he he confirmed that, you know, he, he had offered Drake support and all of that stuff too but like that would be weird though right to have while you are still living to have something like that put out and to be faced with all of that now mm -hmm. it's like how do you how do you even move forward after something like that when yeah. all of that horrible things happened under your watch you know like it's just but yeah that was that was a hard watch to 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 go through that yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Anybody who hasn't seen um, Quiet on Set, it's not one that you want the kids awake for. Yeah, no, definitely make sure the kids are asleep first. <laughs> um, for anybody that's watching, it's like, oh, I'll go check out that movie yeah. or documentary, but yeah. make sure your kids are asleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a lot more shocking than I had anticipated. Well, yeah, a lot of times things like that, I think, would be um, just because we go into things with a preconceived notion based on what we already know. But then when you're presented with new information, it, it that really would create a whole different, I guess, understanding, which kind of creates that shocking and well, unnerving And nature. we live in a, such a filtered world too, right? That it was, I think that that's it too, right? Everything that, you know, we've heard about certain things happening over mm -hmm. the years and whatnot, but to have it, be presented in such an unfiltered way and to see those court documents and to hear all of those things. I think that's where it was more jarring for me to actually like, you know, to have those things like in detail, not just like generic, Oh, this generic form of whatever happened, mm -hmm. but it was actually very, very specific and just totally shocking and heart wrenching. And it's just like, it, it's, yeah, I don't know. And then I ended up watching his new, his new music video after that. And that was heartbreaking too, because then you see all of the references that he made in his music video mm -hmm. from, you know, his history and whatnot. Well, I find it interesting that he wanted to just be a performer, whether that was on stage, whether that was music, that was what he wanted was to just be a performer. And it's, it's interesting to, I find it interesting because usually people want to go one way or the other. They want to do music or they want to do movies or tv or whatever right like they seem to want to go one way or the other and for him i found it interesting that that, that it was just to entertain he just mm -hmm. wanted to be an entertainer however that looked um <coughs> excuse me um yeah no i thought that was something that was interesting because i didn't realize because i always thought that his music was actually just a side project. Like a lot of how Disney actors yeah. and whatnot, I was like, oh, I'm a Disney actor. And because I am, I have to do music. Um, that's how I thought Drake Bell's music was. I thought it was just one of those types of things where I was like, well, I'm an actor so I for this kid's thing, so I also have to do music. Um, I didn't realize that music was something that was a part of what he wanted to do initially. Yeah. And that was actually a part of who he was, which was really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, and apparently they love him in Mexico, but that's, that's it's not it's not something new. like. 
when you hear through that too, like that was something that has kind of always been there, mm -hmm. and I guess it makes sense as to why he ended up being <coughs> there. But excuse me. And I mean, like obviously, like you know, his music is not my personal like cup of tea, but you can't deny that he is a very talented mm -hmm. human being. It's interesting when certain people, like certain artists, have um, when certain artists have like popularity in different countries. You know, like. Sum 41 is very big in Japan. Like, people love him in Japan. Drake Bell, Mexico. Like, it's, it's I don't know, it's so strange to me. Why Why is it that certain bands just hit differently in, a, in certain countries, you know? Just to say hi to the new person in the comments. Hi, Welcome. Mink. Hi, Mink. Welcome <laughs> to the channel. And to Alan. Yeah, definitely, I would, it's, definitely watch his, the, he just released his music video this last week. And if you've seen the documentary, definitely you recommend recommend watching that too. And if you know anything, I don't know if you know about what happened with his wife and his kid. Um, but when he went missing, I think this was last year, she ended up filing for divorce. So there's like that piece in it too. And it's just the whole thing is just really heartbreaking. Like, but um, it's it's good that after all of this, he's still deciding to, you know, like, I mean, Right, him and Amanda Bynes grew up together, and you see what how her life went, and then you see what he's doing, and it's, um, it's good that he's you know picking up the pieces and moving on, kind of very much like what Derek mm -hmm. did, right? You know, bad things happen, but they're choosing to press forward anyways. But I've never actually heard any of Drake Bell's music, to be honest. I've never taken the time. I may actually do that this week. Uh, Ming said, I'm just scrolling through YouTube lives. Yeah, well, well cool. thanks you, for joining you us You can join here. us anytime. <laughs> We're more than happy to, yeah. more than happy to, it's cool. to welcome you in. It's cool to have this new vertical option. We're just getting used to this because we've started up doing the, like, main channel live streams. So this is, this is something new for us. So, yeah, but yeah. it's been fun. Yeah, it's cool. I like having the, the vertical in as well because then people can pop in and out. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a little bit easier um, for people that are just kind of checking out different things, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a cool feature. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, I, I I think the reason I had never looked into Drake Bell stuff, one, it's is because yourself. of how many people are like, you look like Drake Bell. Uh, um, but the because of the aspect of I thought he yeah. was into music because he was a child star first, that I was like, ah, I have no interest in listening to what he has to say. But, I had actually no idea that he had had a band that whole time. No, I thought, yeah, well, see, that's the thing, too. I thought he started doing music after Drake and Josh. I didn't realize that he was doing music way before and that that was a part of what he grew up with. So very, very different. Yeah, it had been quite a while since I had heard any of his stuff, too. Um, I had never actually seen that show or even heard of it until we watched the documentary. But all those other ones, like, I grew up watching. So, but Victorious was the one. I think Ariana Grande was, or was she on that one or was it the other one? Anyways. But yeah, I didn't, so he made a cameo on that show. I had a, I had a buddy who was really into Drake and Josh, and I, I don't know, I didn't really watch a whole lot of... We watched a lot of Nickelode Nickelodeon growing up. Yeah, I didn't watch a whole lot of Nickelodeon. Some of their movies I did, but... Yeah, like the Amanda show, that was a very big thing. <laughs> Me and my sisters loved that show and all that. Too. And then, you know, like later on when she came out and saw those movies and then he was in the, um, whatchamacallit, the one with the big family. Yeah. Uh, uh, yours, mine, and ours. Yeah. And then the band that he's playing with, I think that's probably really the last time like I, I had heard much of him was during that time. Um, the band he was playing with was actually very close to where I grew up and I had seen them play when they were still just like a local band, like before they'd even been famous. So that was kind of yeah. cool. Mink said, I liked Sam and Cap, but the director was vile. Yeah. yeah, we were actually just talking about that a few minutes ago. Um, if, you, if you've if you seen, I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming based on your comment, you've probably seen, um, what's it called? Quiet on Set, yeah. the the documentary that was just released. We, we just finished watching it a few nights ago. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, it's very, very sad and unfortunate. A lot of the things that went on and just really gross that they would do certain things on child child um child shows yeah. and stuff so but, but yeah we watched zoe 101 too that was another one that i mean i think we even watched that we, one after we got married we would watch that we, on like the disney channel when we, <laughs> when we got married the um 
the place that we were renting came with free cable. Yeah. So we watched we've had cable. we watched the Family Channel, and Zoe One Hundred and One was on there, and there was nothing else on the cable yeah. channel. So it was like, well, we'll watch uh, the Family Jonas Channel. Jonas Brothers. Yeah. So we watched all the Disney Nickelodeon that was showing up on um, Hannah on Montana the family, on the Family Channel. See, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing about Hannah Montana. That show. The dad and the brother were, hilarious. were friggin' hilarious. Yeah. And that was the sole reason we watched that show was because they were so funny. It was that's what made that show good was not even like the main part of why the show even existed. It was purely the brother and the dad were the best part of that show. Yeah, and to Mink, um, yeah, we just watched the mm -hmm. documentary and I had actually um I just was mentioning before I had initially started hearing this stuff because Christy Carlson Romano, who had played Ren on Even Stevens, she had started interviewing like all of these like past, you know, child stars. And so a lot of this stuff started coming out. But then obviously once Jeanette McCurdy's book went, you know, crazy, that's kind of when every and then with Alexa, I can't remember her Alexa Nicholas, I think that's her name. She was very like she did a lot of protests and all of that stuff too. So it's kind of like been on my radar. I just never realized how bad it was until we watched that. Yeah. But we got into this conversation because we were talking about lookalikes and he had looked like Drake Bell and then that's how we got into all of this thing. It's just weird sometimes how conversations go and then just Steer. how process of finding information goes, right? So. Yeah, I hadn't actually heard of Dan, but I recognized his face. Like, I had seen, I don't know if it was because he looked like somebody that I knew, but mm -hmm. I was pretty sure I'd seen his face before. Well, and then we watched the other show, too, uh, What I Like About You with Amanda later on. Like, me and my sisters watched a lot of her stuff, too, when we were younger. And then as she got older and her career progressed, and then, I mean, I don't even know if that is her now, the one that shows up on the pictures. That, don't even find it just, it doesn't look I, like I mean, I, one of my, I guess, guilty pleasures is watching the things where people... Um, there's this plastic surgeon guy who examines people's faces to say whether or not he thinks that they've gotten things done. And I find these videos really entertaining. I don't know why, but like you learn a lot about like facial features and muscles and stuff. And it's just like, I just, you know, one thing to me is no matter how much plastic surgery you have, it's not going to change certain things for one, but it's definitely not going to change your voice. And the person who is claiming to be Amanda Bynes right now doesn't talk anything like her. Like her tone is different. Her, you know, way she articulates thing is different. And sorry, I'm going down a completely weird rabbit trail now, but yeah, all of that stuff is so unfortunate and yeah. heartbreaking. And Alan definitely said he, yeah. uh, Amanda show was something he definitely grew yeah. up watching. I can't believe you had never heard of it though. Cause that was such like a big thing. It was such a big show. I don't even remember what my friends were into because I generally, when it came to TV, I watched growing up. I watched Pokemon. Well, yeah, you watched a lot of old people shows. Though. Yeah, it's true. I watched, <laughs> I watched Pokemon and whatever my friends were into, and I, I don't, I don't remember. I remember they were into Rugrats when we were kids, but when it came to that era of like kind of early oh, that Rugrats, period, yeah. Early, early 2000s, I don't really remember what we were into. Dexter's Lab was really funny, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. A lot of the Cartoon Network shows, I guess, really was what, mm -hmm. what, I, what I watched. Wishbone. Anybody who's seen Wishbone, that's my jam right there. Oh, so Alan said there's a Chuck era Sum 41 poster in the movie She's the Man with Amanda Bynes. That's one of the oh, movies awesome. that I had actually always wanted to see and then I never ended up seeing. So that's, that's funny because... If we had watched it now, I probably would have noticed that thing. <laughs> Didi, what are you doing in my lab? <laughs> I'm so glad that somebody knew my reference. The, the there's so many people we talked today where it's like Dexter's Lab, and they're like, I don't know what Dexter's Lab is. Such it was such a good show, and that was one of those things. There were some shows that I went back and watched where I went back and watched Ed and Ed Ed and Eddie when I was growing up, and like song and, just started playing. And I rewatched it, and I was just like, eh, "This show is kind of dumb." But when I went back and watched Dexter's Lab, it was like, "This is still so good." <laughs> well, that was like with Doug when we I tried to watch that, and I was like, "This is actually like kind of boring." Like Doug, you know Doug with patty mayonnaise and, and all that <laughs> stuff. But then the show that I ended up showing that my kids really, because I tried to show them a few different shows that I grew up with, but yeah. the one they really loved was Kim Possible. Yeah. Dan credits for Dexter's Lab. <laughs> it's been a while. I'd have to I'd have to refresh my memory on. It. I don't remember to be honest. <laughs> um, I'd have to look look again. That was like, man, show. kids shows though used to be really good. Like, I mean, now obviously there's a bit of a taint there with some of the stuff that's, you know, like it's, yeah, tainted, it's tainted looking at that. But, um, 
But yeah, no, we did grow up with some pretty good shows, though. Yeah, there was a lot of good ones that period of time. And, like, shows that a lot of people don't realize. Like, I, I showed the kids some of uh, Animaniacs the other day, going through some of their songs, stuff <laughs> like that. Pinky in the Brain is the best. Well, but they were educational, too. Like, yeah. I remember when the show Hysteria came out. Like, and there was the little, there was a little farting baby. And, like, the show was gross. <laughs> but, like, in a kid kind of way. Like, kid potty humor. And, but it was educational. But, like, in a rude way. But I really <laughs> loved that show. It was so good. Yeah. And like yeah, Animaniacs was very educational, and even even elements of Pinky and the Brain had I loved had, Pinky and the had Brain educational type things. The, the she, brain looked like my family doctor growing up. She doesn't look like the brain, but in this between the two of us, I'm, I'm <laughs> Pinky. She's the brain. She, uh, but. I'm gonna take over the world. <laughs> to rock. <laughs> uh, one, one great rock show can change the world. <laughs> It's true, though. Oh, Look at Woodstock. God. People still talk about Woodstock. I mean, granted, maybe it didn't necessarily change the world, per se, but definitely when you have a, a, a music festival as iconic as that, it is a cultural, it is a piece of culture that is... It's stuck in people's memories, and it's one of those things that just will never, never die. Or like Woodstock 99, the, the bad rap that that had for all the craziness that went on there um but yeah like a one <laughs> that's one thing from the school of rock it's not wrong one great rock show one psychic one i can't remember how the line goes but one great rock show yeah. could change the world alan said some 41 was in king of the hill i don't know if it's their voices but definitely cartoon models that's <laughs> hilarious i'd only ever seen like that show like on and off i had never actually like fully that was one of those shows that for whatever reason there's that one family that i used to babysit for and their kids were allowed to just like watch whatever and stay up till whenever and that was one of the shows that would be on sometimes when i would go to babysit them so that's I, the thing i loved about that era of like adult cartoons was a lot of times they would have that kind of thing where bands would show up <laughs> And they would have them be on the show. That's funny. Um, which would be really good. Whether it was actually them or not. Um, actually having at least their likenesses yeah. in cartoon form. Um, like I remember I remember when the Simpsons movie had come out and they had Green Day play the theme song for it. And they actually did a live show. <laughs> live show on the, on the movie. Which is, which is really good. It's such, that was a great movie. Um, Corn on South I didn't know Corn was on South Park. I had a, I had a friend... Um, in, in high school that was really big into, into South Park, so I watched quite a bit with them. Um, really? Yeah, but uh, it's so funny. The thing I really like about um, South Park is they pick on everybody. Nobody's off limits. So it's they can't ever really be accused of picking on one person or another or one group of people, which is excellent because they, they pick on everybody. Yeah, that's I not love. something I've seen. Like Obviously, like there's certain like famous... Or infamous, I guess, bits from that that kind of everybody's been exposed to at some point, but that's not something that I've ever watched. <laughs> not, I didn't really have a desire to watch it, you know? Blink but I think it was more because, like, my uncles would quote stuff from that. So like, cause I had, because there were so many, um, I had so many aunts and uncles on my one side. A lot of them were close to, like, the younger ones were closer to my age. So it was, you know, a lot of the times more like extra cousins than it was yeah. aunt and uncle. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the channel. Hello. Um, and to our weird conversation of <laughs> many different things. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely uh, moved around, which is excellent. Yeah. It's a lot of good times. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Blink was on, on The Simpsons. I don't think I saw oh. that episode. Um, I mean, everybody has been on The Simpsons. Well, right? they predicted everything. Yeah, like, so, I mean, it's... Literally everything. Pretty much. <laughs> like, well, I remember when the whole, like, Prince thing came out, and then the Michael Jackson thing, and it's just like, man, there's just, like, they've, they've literally talked about everything. It's a little bit weird. The thing I love about Prince, my memory, my favorite memory of Prince isn't even his music. It was the flex they did on Dave Chappelle. Because Dave Chappelle, for anybody that hasn't seen it, when Dave Chappelle had a Chappelle show, he did a sketch of Charlie, Mur Charlie Murphy's True Hollywood Stories, where Charlie Murphy, Eddie Murphy's brother, would tell stories that happened when him and Eddie were in, in Hollywood, and they were apparently were true stories. And this one particular sketch they did was when they met Prince. And so there's this period where Prince, who's being played by Dave Chappelle, makes pancakes, and it's him holding the pancakes dressed as Prince. Prince ended up releasing a single, 
and used a shot of Dave Chappelle as Prince as the cover for the single. And Dave Chappelle was just like, how can I be mad? Like, that's like the ultimate Prince flex oh to take me making fun of him and using that as the cover. And apparently, so apparently the story that uh, Charlie Murphy told was a legit story. Like, whatever happened there really happened. But the fact that he took that a picture of Dave Chappelle dressed as Prince holding pancakes and used that as his cover was... There's, there's, a, there's a video of Dave Chappelle talking about it on a talk show where he explains it. And it's just so amazing. So so good. Dave Chappelle has always like, especially his early stuff, was so good. Like absolute comedy gold. Like a genius when it came to stand up. Um, the the market stand up market is is so saturated now. It's it's hard to find, and so many people try to deliver their content the way that other people do. Yeah. Like I think one of the things that drives me crazy in stand up comedy is when somebody's doing their bit. And they like stumble over their words on purpose because they expected a laugh to be there. So they do that intentional uh, 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 kind of thing because they were supposed to be a laugh. Mm. And so they practiced it as if there was going to be a laugh or they stop. So that way you can laugh and then it just falls flat and it just it feels very awkward. That kind of thing drives me crazy about stand up and the golden age of stand up, unfortunately, yeah. is, is, is past. See, I used to just not care for stand up. And then as we got older, and you know, especially like people like Jim Gaffigan with his stories with his kids, yeah. and it started being more relatable. I started actually like enjoying that and seeing how funny it was. Like when you hear like the anecdotal stuff, like, you know, obviously mm. the stories are exaggerated, right? But it's, that's the kind of stuff that I like because it's like, oh man, I know exactly how that feels. And it well, just makes it so much funnier. Most comedians too, you have to pick a certain period of time of their career uh, because a lot of times their early, early stuff is not yeah. great. And then their later stuff is boring. Whereas like, so like Adam Sandler, like his early, early stuff is, that's eh, kind of funny, but it's his, his heyday period that's the best. Or like even, um, what's his name? Joe Rogan for him. If you look at some of his very, very early stuff that it's a little bit harder to find, it's really pretty good. Um, and then some of his later stuff, there's a period where it's kind of eh. Um, but a lot of comedians are like that, where it's you gotta, you just gotta stuff find that the right Jim Carrey could do when he was young, oh, just insane. physically. It's crazy. Like, like, he's a rubber man. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch Hedberg was one of the greatest comedians of all time, like hands down. It's un it's unfortunate that he he died, but the. Um, he was one of the best comedians. Yeah, his stuff was funny. So good. Like, he had such a different way of looking for things. Like, um, I can't think of one. Off the top of my head. I'm not going to even try. Um, that's so the one about being born and go the window and all of that stuff. That's him, right? No, that's. Um, oh, no, I always get those two confused. That's Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. I <laughs> like I was born by cesarean. You can't really tell, but every time I leave, I have to go out the window. Like,. <laughs> amazing yeah. stuff he had a similar type of comedy style to mitch hedberg but uh comedy central in the early 2000s and uh the roast special yeah. were my favorite so good yeah that was an amazing period of time for that i mean i feel like you know early 2000s was really just the golden age of everything well a lot of stuff too and then it's it ended matter... in 2016 right that's the year where it's like 2016 was the year society died well yeah because then what was it 2017 just felt like 2016 all over again and then it was like some weird thing and then i don't even know where the last 10 years have gone well really. david bowie died in 2016 i'm not saying they're connected however <laughs> you're not, just gonna leave it there i'm not saying they're not connected <laughs> i was never a big fan of bowie's music like i appreciate there's a couple albums that I really enjoy. I really like uh, Space Oddity, and I really like um, Ziggy, the Ziggy, Ziggy Stardust album. Um, but what I do appreciate is what he did as like as an as an artist, like his the artistic side of his music. Because when he was up and coming and trying to make it as an artist, he wasn't really doing too well. But it was once he maintain like once he took on a persona that's when things started taking off when he started kind of getting the theatrical side of things and pushing the boundaries of society at the time um that was when he really started seeing success and that's the part of david bowie that i really appreciate is his ability to almost take like method acting in a way and utilize that to a musical persona for his albums and like his, his music's pretty decent but i wasn't a huge fan other than those two albums i really enjoy granted i guess they're kind of the stereotypical kind of cliche albums to enjoy 
but probably for a reason because yeah. <laughs> they're, they're well, I think they're every crazy. right every artist will have like their classic era yeah right? yeah and those two I think those two I enjoy the best like I, I listened through his discography a couple years ago and um, those were the two albums that stood out for me the most hmm. Well, I am really tired, and I cannot believe that it has been two hours and twenty minutes since we started this stream. This it's been awesome. great, this but I am I'm like I'm getting sleepy. she's tired. Yeah. So with that, it's I been think, a long <coughs> week. Excuse me. Yeah, I think of that where we're going to end for the evening. Um, so next week, we're not sure if we're going to release on Friday or Saturday because next Friday is the release of yeah. the album. So. We might listen through the album, take notes through the couple days, and then for our Saturday for our Saturday, Saturday night live, are we, we might to say that? <laughs> uh, for our for our live on Saturday night next week, we may actually release. We may the live may be us talking about the new yeah. album. That may be our review of the album. Um, Alan the Clown, yeah. so about to order <laughs> order. What's it say? So or, about that order and decline album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. It, it, oh, it's crazy how we uh, went from that. The, yeah. um, I know, all the stuff we've covered. <laughs> I love the album personally. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so good. Like, yeah, I, I really enjoyed listening to it again. I'm excited for Friday. Enough. I'm hoping that our final gets here before Friday. I'm really hoping. It but... hasn't shipped, so I doubt it. Yeah, I don't know. Fortunately, I think it's coming from the States too, so that'll be even longer. Yeah. But... Yeah. Well, I'm glad you you enjoyed yeah, this. Thank you, too. Alan. Well, we enjoyed it's it too. It was, a, it was a kick ass time. Yeah. We liked it. So. But yeah, and stay tuned because we do have something special coming. Something very special. Very special. So except my eyes just went weird. I'm making weird faces tonight. Um, yeah, it's so exciting and not exactly sure when it's gonna come out. The date for sure. Yeah. But you won't want to, if you are Especially a, Alan. Alan, you're yeah. not going to want to miss Alan, this. Alan, you are not going to want to miss this. This is really exciting. We made this for you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be super excited. Exci ex exciting. It's going to be excited. Yeah. No, it's going to be exciting. So we have something special coming up. We'll probably do the, like I said, we'll probably do the review of Heaven and Hell next Saturday night on the live. Mm -hmm. um, and then that way we'll have our thoughts, but then people can also interact yeah. and, and say say your thoughts as we go through it as well. And then we'll, yeah. But uh, yeah, so maybe, that, maybe that'll maybe that be what we'll do. Yeah. Um, and then we need to have that little awards show, right? To rate all of the albums and the tracks and everything. And so. we may do that live too. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. So we may not Dress have, <laughs> we may not have a full length video this week, but we may just do it live instead. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. And then yeah, Tenacious D history coming. That'll be that'll be next, and then Lincoln Park after that. Yeah. So that's the docket coming up. But definitely keep your eyes open because yes. that surprise is going to be amazing. Yes. I would love if we could release it on Friday, but you know we'll we'll see we'll, we'll see, see how, how it goes. goes. So all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Well, thank, thank you for coming you. back. We really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we look forward to seeing you next week. We're here every week. Every, so. every Saturday night, 10 PM, yeah. uh, Eastern standard time. Well, technically it's daylight time now. Eastern daylight yeah. time. Yeah. Toronto time. Toronto. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you everybody. We'll see you next week.